merchant, and of course Carl Pilkington. Ooh, have we got a show for you today? <laughs> have well, we got planned? Je- oh, we got lo- planned? Oh, Come it, on. Oh, loads of stuff, and it, two hours of it. Right. And all the records. But specifically, what sort of stuff have you planned for us? Because I know you've been what working hard. What have you done? Hard. What have you done? Cause I, well, you know, I've been busy this week. I've been yeah. house hunting, I've been uh, various things, but I know you've had the whole week off. Right. So what have you been up to? Like, Go on, Carl. Carl, tell them what we've got. Tell them what you've, what we've planned, all the stuff you've done. What have you got? But Rick, specifically, what have you come up with? Um, quick, 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 because people are getting bored. Tell okay. us what you've- I've come, come up come with, with, um, the music. Right. I've yeah. got- obviously that's- we've already planned that. We planned that last week, so that's all done. But what have you yourself contributed to today's show? I've got a- I've got a- um, mm-hmm. uh, a text message today from right. Ross Noble, you know, Ross Noble the comedian, mm-hmm. who's mm-hmm. on, who's on, oh, I've got news for you. Right. Like that. He says, ask Carl, if he woke up with ladies' boobs, <laughs> would he just put a dress on and live as a lady? Or will he just be a man, but with these boobs? Carl, it's a good question. <sighs> I know, I know that happened to Ross, <laughs> so he's, he's throwing that one out at It you. did in a way, cause he ate pizzas for a yes, year, didn't he? Yes, he did, yeah, yeah. And he got a lovely pair of breasts. Yeah. Go on. Probably the boobs. just find a, a loose fitting jumper, go to the doctor's. <laughs> <laughs> what would you say to the doctor? How would you explain this phenomenon to the doctor? So you'd be, you'd be happy with this, cause you believe in, um, shite, like, no, no, you know, no, happen. No, no. Go on. But what? it can happen, cause I told you a couple of weeks ago how what? that can happen. What? How you can wake up with breasts if you're a fella. I told you. Go on. Haven't you remembered? No, I, 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 funny that, innit? Go on. Have you, Steve? No, I, I don't remember this. Did, did you tell us on air? Yeah. Um, it can happen if you go to Argentina and have a steak, <laughs> you can wake up with breasts. Because, <laughs> Because I'm I sure I'd have remembered Carl, that. Pull the other one. <laughs> <laughs> Look, he likes that. He likes that. Is joke. that what you've come up with, this week? <laughs> yeah, that joke. Yeah. Brilliant. Play a record. It's going to be a dynamite show. <laughs> oh, the oh other listen. One. Look, we're going to play. I'm going to play some classic tunes today. I'm going to educate the youngsters, Steve. Uh-huh. Right now, you've all heard of Lou Reed. You've all heard of Velvet Underground. But you know, have you heard of Venus in Furs, Carl? Shiny, shiny, shiny boots <laughs> of leather. <laughs> Venus in Furs. Velvet Underground. Mm. What a great start. What a classic I mean, song. They, they continue to sound fresh and contemporary. Yeah. Is this, do you know what that song's about, Carl? No. M&S. M&S. It's about M&S. You know that? Yeah. You know the shop? Yeah. It's all about that. Yeah. Whiplash, smile and all that. All the things you can get at Marks and Spencer's. Shiny boots of leather. Yeah. Being whipped. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's a new division they've opened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we have got a great show lined up. Have we? we? No, go we, on. No, we have. No, no, because we've got, um, uh, Rockbusters coming up, the great Rock, new looking quiz. Looking forward to that. Uh, that, that's, that's made the press. Has um, it? Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Um, uh, Frimley Tea Rooms uh, newsletter <laughs> mentioned it. Um, we've also got, um, That's Carl's local, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've also got, uh, Educating Ricky, where Carl educates, educates me. Uh, the one last week, a girl, right? She was deaf, and she was having an argument with her mum, and she pushed her and she hit her head and then she can hear again. Yeah. Don't know what I learned from that. No. It might be, it might be subliminal, someone might be going, it might, it might be a metaphor that I will learn from. Yeah, it's like you know, a I'm parable. Like, yeah, yeah. So, uh, look at his face. We, so, might uh, as well, we might as well be talking Dutch, mightn't we, Carl? Say something quick, it's radio. No, I, d- I, d- I don't understand what you want from me. Oh, we're only joking. Right, so. Educating Ricky, I, I've worked a bit harder this week. We've got some good stuff. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll give you the the the, the, the teaser headlines the later. Headlines in a bit. Yeah. We so you've got, got you've got rockbusters. Carl's well. having a bit of a stressful week because he thinks he's not appreciated because he's he, he's gets in at what time do you get in? About eight or nine, don't you? About well, last week, yeah, I've been busy this week. I've been in at about half past eight in the morning. Yeah, and you've been leaving when? About half past eight, nine o'clock at night. <sighs> yeah, and you're yeah. in Saturday. Yeah, I'm in now. You get paid, don't you? I'm busy at home at A lot home. of people work late, Carl. A lot of people work 12 hour days. Why are you busy at home, Carl? What are you up to? Because we're trying to sort out a move. Uh huh. I've been trying to call around this morning to get someone to buy a food on, on a table from me. Yes. Um. Well, we could put that appeal out now, couldn't we? If anyone wants to buy a futon or a table. Do what's you think a, a, a futon that Carl Pilkington exactly. slept on? How much are you, uh, are you asking? <sighs> Whatever. Uh, well, you need for to be the well, two. You've got, to, you've got to take the two. I don't want, like, different people coming round and that. Sure. <laughs> Wasting you've your time. You've got to buy a futon on a table. It's uh, quite specific, isn't it? Someone <laughs> has to want a futon. Yeah. The, the specific uh, futon you're selling like the It's made, isn't it? Alarm <laughs> clock and tea maker. This is yeah. futon and table. <laughs> yeah. Um. Looking for about, about 100 quid. And yeah. it's good, it's good condition the food yeah, on. Yeah. yeah. Right, no stains, you haven't pissed no. yourself in the, uh, no. No, right. nothing? 
And what uh, kind of table, what sort of table is it? Are we talking, are we talking like a table for a lounge, a, a dining table? No, for, for uh, like a computer and uh, just, you know, something. Has he got any drawers? There no are there any drawers? drawers in, there's no drawers. No, it's just a nice wooden table. Right, uh, is it, is solid. it kind of oak or is it sort of an Ikea sort of thing? No, it's like oakish. It's oakish? Yeah. Okay. So, hundred quid. What, the food one is just, it was just, just the mattress and the, and the, and the, the, the pallets. Yeah. Yeah, but it's not. So you get cheap food on. This is a good one. This is a good one. It's how sturdy. much would that have retailed for when I you purchased it? I think I paid it? about two fifty for right, it. Right, so it's a bargain. Well, for people. if you look at it, if you and how long have you had it? How old? How old this is it? This is a whole new strand. Well, isn't I'm it? thinking. I this don't is think a it's legal. I think I well, don't think we should I'll use. I tell you what, I'm interested in, in Rick. It's right. just just finding out a little bit about the sort of thing that Carl's got in his home. You know, I, I'm interested in pe if people will phone up to spend a hundred pounds just to go round Carl's house. No, 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 I won't be. No. What? No, 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 they'll come here, I'll bring it to work and they can pick it up here. Don't I'm gonna bring a, a, a futon and a table to work. Don't you ride a bike So, hold on, we need someone with a van now. <laughs> yeah. So, we need, is, is anyone who wants to, <laughs> but they're not allowed around your house, can they meet you next door? Someone with a van. <laughs> uh, we'll could be, they meet you in your street somewhere? Hold on, could they meet what you with you, a, hold they, on, what about the little Chinese fellow that lives across the road on the two bouncers and the old woman who's dead reading a book? Can, can, could you meet him somewhere? I've got an idea. What about if you meet at the end of your street, you blindfold them, like they do when, <laughs> when, they, when terrorists <laughs> take the negotiator to the, uh, yeah, to the, the hideout. The, the big cheese. And, um, and so you could do that and, in, and so, you know, they, they could piece together. Maybe where you live With from sounds. the sounds and stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, what about that, Carl? That's that's just a great idea. Yeah. And would you sign the futon for people? Do you think? Would you? Uh, would you give them a little signature? Or maybe you at least a bill pallet, of purchase. Couldn't you? you could sign the pallet. <sighs> yeah. Or I could try and get work to buy it off me, and then we give it away for rockbusters. Do you think they do that? Do you think they do? That? I think probably do it for Foxy with his with yeah. his big. Well, hog. Imagine how big that. Imagine would be. if he wanted to sell his hog. Yeah. That is a motorbike, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's been selling his hog for money for years, <laughs> yeah. hasn't he? Oh dear. So oh, right. we'll see about that. So, so uh, if interest. people are interested, maybe email uh, Ricky at xfm dot co uk. If you're interested in buy, futon, buy Carl's and, futon and, uh, competition. One hundred pounds O N O. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what gear have we got? Anyway? I never knew what that meant. O N O. I, I thought it went sort of oh, on, no. the oh, no. on the nose. Oh, no. <laughs> on the nose. Oh, that's oh, good. Yeah. 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 Um, well, we got. Well, tell me what we got got to give away, Steve. So actually, I have to say, you've excelled yourself we've got this the, week. Richard Ashcroft's single coming up soon. After this, <laughs> go on. <laughs> when have you since? When have you taken to talking like that? <laughs> it does amuse me. <laughs> go on. Um, this is actually this is a nice little collection here. This is a three DVD set. Uh, David Attenborough's uh, The Life of Birds, Trials of Life, and Life in the Freezer. That's a good one, isn't it? That's a selection of uh, animal-based documentaries. Yeah. Uh, we've got and this what is best at. Well, absolutely. This I is when he goes off the ball and does like uh, fast cars. This is, uh, very, very good indeed. This is, a uh, a best of David Bowie compilation. It is a very good, just it's a, a proper one, not the, not the rubbish ones that no one else wanted. This is a brilliant compilation yeah, it's got of the Bowie. selection on there. Uh, we've got this. Now, this looks like a madness. Oh, no, 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 no. It's far worse than we could possibly have imagined. It, it seems to be some kind is it our of house tie in music? with the Our House Madness musical. And it's not a, 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 well, a, ca a cast of 20 people who wanted to be singers. Uh, I, it's tricky to find out. I can't figure out if it's the originals or not. But needless to say, if you're a Madness fan, I'm sure that'd be an absolute treat. Yeah, you love treat. that. You love that. Uh, love that. now I know that, uh, Steve, I wouldn't mind that DVD collection myself, <laughs> but I can't. <laughs> That's it's true, the giveaways that, no, we can't. We I'm can't. talking of great compilations. What about this? It's Country Legends. I'm oh, seeing on the front right. there Glenn Campbell. We've got Dolly Parton. We've got, um, what do we call it? On the, on the car, on the front. What do we call it? Yes. <laughs> from, from, a great performer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Jake, uh, what do we call it? Oh, excellent. Some great yeah. hits from him. So, uh, yeah. that's there as well. well that's collection. That's the uh, same XFM compilation again, easy to get hold of. If but you the big one, the, the big one, the film that Carl um, well, picks every week. The, the big DVD one. movie this week. Don't Carl. go out tonight if you've got a DVD player and a television set because no? you'll be staying in and watching this fantastic film. It will tear your soul apart. It's Hellraiser. <laughs> <laughs> the <laughs> original <laughs> Hellraiser. Bear in mind, it has been on Channel 4 and Channel 5 and on most cable channels <laughs> since it came out, <laughs> but if you haven't seen it, if you're one of the only people who has not seen it, <laughs> and of course you have to be over 18 to play, then you can win Hellraiser. That is fantastic. Well, uh, pl play, a, play a song, Carl, we'll come okay. back to that. More, more great stuff. Indeed. The competition coming up later. Email only, isn't it, Carl? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Futon. <laughs> Futon's still available. <laughs> Richard Ashcroft, check the meaning. Well, Carl, you're chuffed, aren't you? So what's happened? Know. What's just happened? Tell the listeners what's this happened. This has sparked you off a bit. Steve's just called up. He's, uh, putting an offer for the foot on and yeah. the table. Yeah. Um, I think he wanted to, he definitely wanted it, but I said, look, you know, think about it over the weekend. Yeah. Give well, you're not call. a hustler. No, well, I'm not, I'm not gonna rush him into it because once he's got it, he's, he can't bring it back. I'm not messing about. No. 
Um, so the bloke you... said, uh, what sort of wood is it? Carl said, sort of, uh, sort of like a light brown colour. He went, what, beach coloured? <coughs> Carl went, depends what beach you're on. <laughs> Which was nice. <laughs> you do understand there's a wood that's called, called beach. beach. Uh, well, he's, he's happy, he, he likes the sound of it, nice sure. plum cover. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna be, uh... <laughs> yeah. It's Carl going, I go with Magnolia, you walls my mind, he's yeah. just going, I'll tell you what, nice, look nice in your spare bedroom. It was like a, well, he an did, episode he did, of Change Rooms, it was like listening to an episode of Carl. He did the deal in, in under three minutes, wasn't it? It was pretty song, good, he? he? phoned it about halfway through in that song, so, yeah. you work pretty quick, Carl, yeah. I gotta say. Yeah. Yeah. It's your manx scally way. I'm sure it? we're not allowed to do this, though. No, I think it's highly criminal. Yeah. Well, have you got anything? Are you <laughs> Well, I'll tell you, I am moving shortly, so I mean, I might, I might come in next week, I could have a couple of I threw away yeah. a desk the other day. I gotta get rid of a bed, um, a chair, cause you know I'm pretty tall, <laughs> this is so pathetic. Yeah. <laughs> when I, when I moved up to London, my dad said, well you wanna be careful, cause I mean the seating in a lot of these London pads, it's bad seating, very low backs, fashionable, isn't it, fashionable chairs and stuff, you're a big guy, six foot seven, you need like a decent chair. We went to a shop, it was like a second hand furniture yeah. shop, right? Yeah. I bought this chair, very <laughs> high back. <laughs> Why did you buy that? I bought a chair. Bought a solo, I love yeah, that. <laughs> it's just a chair, so I could sit was in it, my room it? and watch TV. But was it a soft chair, or was it a wooden it was chair? Kind of like a sort of, uh, it was, well, let me explain, because it's kind of like an armchair, but it's kind of got wooden arms. So I get this chair, I bring it up to London, I'm thinking, this is a great that. chair, this is a wonderful chair. Right. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be watching TV, everyone else is Pipe. doing agony. Pipe, you know, yeah, smoking I've got jacket. chair, yeah. right? And I brought it up, and someone went, they looked at it, they went, isn't that an orthopedic chair? <laughs> and I looked at it again, right, and I realised it's kind of white cleanable. <laughs> It's made of some kind of fabric <laughs> that allows you to just mop it down with a wet what, cloth. Why? Because I think it came from an old people's home. Oh. You know when you see like old people oh, in some no. kind of social room in an old people's home, yeah. just sat watching a little Everything's crappy old TV, and yeah. they can you can wipe everything clean. It was it's oh. one of those chairs. Oh, that's fantastic. So if anyone's maybe they've got an elderly Didn't relative you keep slipping off. Just goes like, and it's also the most uncomfortable chair I've ever, because unless you've got chronic back pain, <laughs> it just is, it's just the most uncomfortable chair. It makes you sit bolt upright, We've, if not slightly forward. You've done a good sell on it. I think, uh, <laughs> are the, the phones are going mental. Well, How much do you want for that, Steve? If you've had a recent accident, or you've got a disabled, or, or um, or uh, someone in, in the house who's just, uh, elderly, then, um, then you might want to get in touch. I'm happy to, you can take this that off, man, so for uh, 25 wrong. quid. This is so wrong. 25 quid, I'll, oh, I'll take that. Oh. Whether you're setting up an old people's home, you know, it's a little <laughs> yeah, pet, pet project. <laughs> yeah, you don't get a lot of grant. We can help. <laughs> exactly. We can help. I mean, and because though Steve's such a high flyer, I mean, if it really is a good cause, they just give it to you. Well, <laughs> <laughs> let's not rush into everything. Anything, right? I like to assess each case. You know, individually. Yeah. But so, sure, yeah, certainly, sure. if you are a charity, then then I might go for twenty quid. I can t you take off my hands for twenty quid. <laughs> 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 but otherwise, twenty five, and I tell you, it's, it's in good condition because I haven't really sat on it. I quit off if you really. Are you know, and, 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 and there were some stains. I've wiped them clean. Uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Uh, oh dear. Well, that's fantastic. So we've. Uh, we've yeah, well, uh, let's, I tell you what, we should we should resuscitate next week. Swap shop. The multi coloured so, uh, swap uh, shop. Uh, uh, honestly, there's it's a, a great format. But there's a couple of things I've always wanted to, to get my house. Swap shop is one of them, and the other one is superstars. I don't remember Superstars. Superstars was great because it was like the people of their time. So you'd have like people like nowadays you'd have you'd have Beckham and uh, uh, um, what's his name? Uh, who's a tennis player? Who's a R Rosetsky. Yeah, Rosetsky. Yeah, yeah. And they they have to compete. So all these people have to compete at each other's sports. And they have to choose seven out of ten sports. And there's a leaderboard and there's a big final. Oh, old Keegan came off his bike. It, it's it's Brian not. Jack's it's not like it's to win it. No, no, it's real sports. It's, real proper, it's sports. proper sports. It's hundred meters, tennis, weightlifting, all the real sports. You you can't do your own sport. Well, I know you're a pretty big uh, guy now in in British TV. You're a bit of a big shot. What do you reckon? Pull some strings. Let's get it back on <laughs> Let's there. Get it back Superstars. On there. Superstars sounds fantastic. Me, Johnny Vegas, Peter Kay. <laughs> The bigger fella, <laughs> exactly. I think maybe the, the comedy comedy superstars. Um, what we got next? We got a bit of Springsteen, haven't we? Let's play Springsteen. This is uh, a track from his current album, The Rising. A lot of people Brilliant. think Bruce is a bit M O R, a bit middle of the road, or whatever. But you know, I just think piss off. Yeah, <laughs> I just think screw you. Let's I just play think it. yeah, get lost. Oh, you yeah. imagine this: you're open top caddy. Yeah, you're just going around country. Route 66. You just, you just you're going home maybe for Thanksgiving. Yeah, to see yeah. your folks. That's just just turn up the radio if you are. Play the tune. Probably not. Though. That just reminded me when I brought a. So stop it for a second. <laughs> just realised when I brought when I brought a woman shambles. back and she saw the orthopedic chair. <laughs> you bring a woman back to your pad. Oh, it's embarrassing. And the harness. Yeah. And <laughs> exactly uh, the truss. Yeah. And the, yeah. <laughs> just again, can you give me those two splints? I'm sorry. Those two splints there. Well, I've got to go. Have you? <laughs> Is this a potty under the bed? <laughs> <laughs> 
The Rising, title track from Bruce Springsteen's current album, Great The Rising. Track. Yeah, it's good Great. Tune. It's that, that feeling of so it's melancholy and uplifting. We've had quite a, a, an interactive show so far because we've got a, a call that Superstars is coming back. Mm. It's due to come back in the BBC schedules, which is great news. Apparently was Steve Redgrave is one of them. I just don't think, will professional footballs be allowed to take part these days though? When they're not 50 works. grand a week, you, you can't really have them falling off bikes and, uh, and their ankles, can't yeah. you? Yeah. Ian McCaskill last night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm slippery thick. Love, yeah. Ian McCaskill. <laughs> oh, he fell off his bike about three it. times, didn't he? Oh, if it, did, did you see slippery thick? No, no, I haven't seen it. There was a great moment where they had to go into the, a thing called a bod pod and you sit in it, it looks quite space age, and it, and it, analyzes you and it tells you percentage body fat. Now, I think, um, men are meant to be about, sort of, uh, 15 to 25 percent body fat, women are meant to be like about 20 to 30 body fat. And they all went in there and, um, he went in there and it said, uh, in McCaskill and it came up, uh, 34% body fat or whatever. Slightly overweight. Uh, I'm gonna come to the 38% overweight. Then it went, um, the other one, da 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 da, um, uh, 45% body fat, o obese. Then it went, Jono. Uh, Did it say, uh, I don't want to tell you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it went, uh, 50, 50, 50 percent body fat, um, uh, very obese. Then Rick Waller was sat in there. And it came up 60% body fat. And I wanted it to come up slug. <laughs> God. But it came up more with it 60, you are 60% fat. So, so 60% of him is yeah, fat. Yeah, yeah. 60% yeah. yeah. of his entire makeup. That's extraordinary. It is. Well, you yeah. know my feelings about Wallace. Well, don't, let's go on to it. Well, that's I mean, the reason I don't you know, watch the show, actually. I do feel a bit sorry for him. I mean, he is, he is, I think he is trying, although the fella there. Um, thinks he's not trying. So I don't know who to believe, Steve. Sure. Yeah, I don't know yeah, who to believe yeah. Wallow and he does get pains in that and he is a bit... Yeah. The know. problem is, right, he does like his food. Yeah, we, we all like our food. But if he didn't do the exercise, he wouldn't be as hungry and he might not get fat. This is a whole new nutritional outlook. <laughs> Absolutely. So you're saying don't exercise and carry on eating and that's, that's interesting. <laughs> no, Can you... I... No, let, me, no let, let me write that one down. I will send that to the... British <laughs> nutritional organisation. Yeah, no, that's good. Carl Pilkington. Okay, well, no, that's a, it's no, a good. I'm no doctor or anything. <laughs> Whoa, Yo, come wait, off wait, it. Wait, Stop wait, being so bloody modest, <laughs> please. You are a doctor. You're you just, are. Yeah. Are you, are you not, you're not a doctor. Seriously, you're not. You didn't qualify. But <laughs> that's interesting. You dropped out early, or that's mad. That is mad. I mean, you, you're as good as doctor. You just, you just didn't get the paperwork, or whatever. You just didn't turn yeah. up for the exam. Yeah. Yeah. He was just saying that Bruce brings him, uh, um, depressed him a little bit. Yeah. Because it reminds him of when he worked in the supermarket. And, uh, I said, it's funny how a song can do that, take you right back there. He went, yeah, nothing else can do that. I said, well, actually, smell is the most evocative sense, because smell is linked to memory in the brain. And he went, yeah, they probably said that before music, though. <laughs> And now all signs are going, we've got, we better revisit this because there's music now. Yeah, yeah. We've had this theory knocking around for, you know, ten I went to see Bruce, you'll be pleased to know. I just want uh, the fans of the show to know that I did make it to Bruce Springsteen's concert it. last week. And, uh, he started with that song we just played and it was dynamite. I mean, he never let up. Almost three hours, he rocked the joint. He's 53, he was sliding across, it was pure rock and roll. Pumping our fist, sliding across the floor on his knees, he was jumping on the piano. It was real Jerry Lee Lewis rock and roll. And uh, it was dynamite. And um, I just was looking around though, and, and when I am the trendiest person at a gig, oh, dear. then I'm in trouble. Do you know what I mean? And there was some of the people there, I imagine, you know on Amazon.com, um, it says like, people who bought X also bought Y. Yeah. And I yeah. think people who bought tickets for Bruce probably bought tickets for Mark Knopfler. Yeah, I'd Dave Gilmore. Yeah, Pink Floyd, without I Pink know. Floyd. But then Stevie there's, Nicks. But there's also yeah, but then there's also you know the mon all the monsters. Right, they probably buy stones when they visit. You know, yeah, yeah, and, and yeah. probably Tina it's the Turner. blue wash jeans. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's the small waistcoats. Yeah, over a denim shirt, plaid plaid shirt. Maybe yeah. sort of like Timberlands. Nothing wrong with Timberlands. I'm not. That's libelous. Sure. No. Sure. See, I've done it again. Yeah. But so it was hell getting out. I couldn't find. I mean, I, I went to the tube and it was a nightmare because some of the tubes weren't running. I just said my friend, "I'll sort this." You know, the, the stormed off trying to find a cab. Couldn't find a cab. Wandering around Wembley, just livid. I mean, fuming because I couldn't find a cab. Just I was screaming because I was going. I've got money. I'm on the radio. I've had a t TV show. I've got the cash. I'm willing to spend it. There's yeah. no one who can help me get home. And I was. Thinking, I've seen I've seen him shout this in Brewer Street, yeah. just to stand in the middle. Go on. And I was thinking to myself, what would you have done though? Because in the end, I just sat in a little calf, had something to eat. But you, I mean, if you couldn't get a cab, what would you have done? Just because there's a couple of, I was looking, there's a couple of hotels <laughs> near Wembley. I was thinking you'd have just checked in, yeah, and just and, and stayed there. Yeah, when, when there's a cab, let me know. But I was thinking because you were thinking of going. Would you have booked a cab beforehand? 
Uh, yeah. Would you have- would you have thought to do that? Yeah, I'd have got a cab there and I'd have booked a cab One of the, uh, genius. One the genius. helicopters just took you back home. Yeah. Oh, he's oh, having a dig, isn't he? He's having a laugh, isn't he? Oh, really? Yeah. 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 Play the ads. Yeah. <laughs> Death in Vegas. Scorpio Rising. Featuring the voice of, is it Noel Gallagher? Liam, isn't it? Is it Liam? Sounded a bit like him. Liam, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Right, isn't it? Excellent, yeah. Right, okay, let's, uh, let's get this show well and truly on the road. Um, we better start, what, ed educating Ricky next car? What have you got for me? I can't wait for learning. I need learning. <laughs> I need education. We should just teach explain, uh, obviously, for those that have just tuned in, Carl, uh, Try to teach Ricky three things each week. Based on the pun title. And yeah, each of them, uh, each of them, just to tantalise Ricky, is, yeah. um, abbreviated into some kind of headline. It, a cryptic just clue involving a, involving a pun. So what have you got for us oh, this they week? Are, they, are, they are really cryptic this week. Okay. Yeah. Um, first story, little headline, is, um, don't worry about him, he candle it. He candle it? Yeah. Sounds a bit like he can handle it, but it's yeah. not. Brilliant. Uh, second one. <laughs> Uh, oh, get a lobe of this. I'm, I'm <laughs> Get a lobe of this. <laughs> <laughs> it's a classic. Who can forget? Get a lobe of this. <laughs> yeah. So, Coming soon. And, and stocking eight kilo waterman. Uh, Go on. Second one. Yeah. I'm committed to this treatment. Mm. I'm committed to this treatment. Yeah. All right, tantalizing. Yeah. And the last one, um, uh, the police are causing a bit of a stare. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the way he looks when he says it. <laughs> are we yeah. there? Oh, I wish we could see. Can't we get Carl on telly? Oh. There's got to be a way. There's we cannot. Uh, th 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 with all the cable channels, anyone can get on telly these days. Let's all get. Right, let's, so let's let's phone up. Let's get you on Choice or something. Just what? a little. Just Carl. What 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 are you going for? Oh, he can handle it. I think. Don't worry about him. He candle it. He candle yeah. it. Okay. Sorry, let's, yeah? let's hear this one. All right. Are you familiar with the uh, the phrase "burning the candle at both ends"? Yeah. Do you know how it's come about? I know a man well, who does. I, I assumed that it was to get more light in the room. How would that work? Well, they'd put it sideways and light both wicks, so out of one candle they could get no. two. No, go on. No, what it is... I know is, what it means. Uh, it means you're, you're, staying, you're doing too much, you're staying up too much, right. you're not getting enough sleep and you're... Well, years ago... Yeah. Um, when they didn't have light bulbs and that. Oh yeah, what year is this? Literally, quite, literally ages ago, specifically. Yeah, quite a bit back. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, didn't have light bulbs and that, so they used to have candles. When in did the, the light bulb come in? Because I, I can't remember at the moment. What? I phew, don't know. Okay, go on. So, um, yeah, so they've they've got a light bulb. You're not. You, you wouldn't know. You're a doc, you're a doctor. You're not a historian. Go on. Uh, and people who worked a lot of hours. Yeah. How many? Literally lots. They get up early in the morning because they have to be up early. Yeah. And it's dark outside, so they light the candle. Sure. And they wear it out a bit, and then they'd be getting in late as well. Yeah. And like they'd be like, "Oh, it's dark. I'll have to light the candle again." And the burning candle at both ends of the day. So that's where the saying comes from: burning the candle at both ends. So. All right. That's a uh, little lesson. Yeah. yeah. Lesson Good. one. Okay. Uh, <laughs> can I have? No, no, no I... you, you can't. Have you can't rush yet. into them, Rick. You've got to. I've got uh, to soak you've in got, that. You've got to soak that one in. Any questions for Carl off the back of that? What do you think? So, so, so people were. I mean, basically, where this comes from is people were <laughs> <laughs> literally burning the candle at both ends of the day. day. Sure. <laughs> there you go. So we've still got. Go on. I'm committed to this treatment. And I can't wait. This is like this is like Christmas Rick, Eve for me. It's it. like Christmas. I've got to open another present now. No, I'm afraid we've got to save it. R Rick, listen. Um, we often get a lot of email correspondence during sure. the show, Rick, uh, which I don't I don't sort of pass on to you because I mean you're busy, you're planning the show and stuff. Sure, you've got sure, a lot of ideas. You've sure. got music and stuff to worry yeah. about. So I check the emails and we get a lot of response. A lot of people that obviously uh, you know want to give us feedback. Uh, just a sample one um, from Richard Anderson. He's just uh, emailed us in here, Rick, because uh, he's been listening to the show. He says, Ricky, your show is appalling. Um, are you actually aware you're on the radio or has someone just secretly stuck a microphone on you? That's from Richard Anderson. So, <laughs> yeah. that's, the, that's typical of the kind of feedback Rick we're getting <laughs> really? today. Really? So, it's that um, good, is it? So that's, that's the kind of, yeah, high positive praise that we're getting. So, uh, I'm, 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 I'm glad Anderson's listening because I wanted him 
I yeah, was, no, I mean, I, w I was gunning for him as a fan. I was worried that early, early on in our career. So uh, I think uh, I think he's hooked now, though. But thanks, uh, Anders, for <laughs> getting in touch. Good work. He's sitting Cheers, through it for Hellraiser, though, isn't he? Yeah. Well, that's still to come. Still to come. Still to come. What we're playing. Uh, a little bit of old dirty b. I can't. I can't say the word. It's offensive. Old old dirty b. Is it old dirty bollocks? <laughs> no, 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 no. no, no. Old, dirty. old dirty. Old dirty big cock. <laughs> no, what no. is it? What is it? I can't tell you. It's offensive. Breaks up. Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Funny word, isn't it? <laughs> it's it's really funny word. What other funny it? words are there? Although Carl? XFM's a funny word, I just yeah. say the letters out because mm. the word doesn't make sense. Just uh, let me just check Richard Anderson's email again. Just remind myself of. Go on. Uh, Ricky, your show is appalling. Richard Anderson, thanks. What I like about, uh, Dickie, <laughs> Dickie Anders <laughs> is that he's obviously so angry, he's so annoyed by the show <laughs> that he's bothered to email just to get the venom out. Because <laughs> otherwise you'd just think you'd switch over. Well, but he's knows, obviously so annoyed he's he actually switched how, on the computer. He knows how to hurt someone Locked as well. On. Exactly. He's really taking the time out to, I'm to show his disapproval. of giving up. Mm. I'll tell um, you what though, it, can't, it, it is pretty hard to listen to. What this? Yeah. I've listened back to the tape that when you're, ma when you're making that thing for the best of. Yeah. And I... I mean, I sounded like Albert Taplock. I sa I really sounded like some sort of punch drunk stroke victim. And I, I oh, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. I don't remember myself like that. Yeah. Um, mm. so, uh, yeah, I do apologise. It's, it's not a great planned show, slick word. Of articulate <laughs> no, sentence, no, no, is no, it? No, but no, I mean, no, then no. who is? But I think, I mean, there's so many shows that are, you know, nowadays on radio. I think there's, there's a lot of stuff that's heavily formatted, you know, and there's with, you know, I don't know, presenters who are professional and have got some sort of degree of talent yeah. and an ability to sort of string a sentence bored together. You know, I'm thinking Chris Moyles. Yeah. Predominantly. Yeah. But I mean, I'm bored with those, those yeah, people. Exactly. Who, you know, I, I think we need a little bit of, a little bit of calm hey, in our lives. I'm just thinking, actually, I've just suddenly struck me. If you want to get rid of your, um, your furniture. Got a buyer. You've already got a buyer. Because if, if there's any st other stuff, what I we. <laughs> Uh, we were clearing some stuff out of our place recently and we just dumped some stuff outside on the street because we were going to take it and, and take it to the tip later. Just dump some stuff outside. And I have never seen so many people come out of the woodwork scavenging through our garbage. It was incredible. They were like zombies. Well, that's what I was they saying. They were like flies around shit. Uh, it but was when I crazy. Said to Carl, when I said to Carl, uh, That's what you should just do. Just dump it outside because it'll get taken. When he went, he said, he said, do you think I asked enough, Andrew? I went, yes, definitely. He went, oh, I could ask. I said, no, don't do that. I said, because you'll end up having to pay the council to take it away. He said, I wouldn't. He said, I'd rather just dump it and let a little homeless fella have it. And <laughs> then he went, imagine the little homeless fella sitting at the desk. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Can you imagine, right, that I walked past, he sat outside Hearts, right, the little 24-hour shop, yeah. sat outside there and he goes, have you got any change? And they go, I can do better than that. Yeah, here's a chair and table. Here's, here's a, a futon. futon. Yeah. A futon, no less. Not your boring bed, but a trendy... Yeah. Well, but the thing is, I- the amazing the number of people that would stop to look at our junk. What? There was a car driving by with a family and kids, perfectly respectable, just driving past, you know, on the way to somewhere, stopped, got out, got the kids out of the car, come on kids, let's just look through this junk. But I like the you idea that- You said we were going to Walton Towers, yeah. Dad. No, no, sorry, no time. We're not going this to the zoo, let's look through this rubbish. We're not going looking through people's rubbish Put again, Put these gloves we? on, look through this shit. Ow! That's a yeah, needle. that's a needle. It was- I mean, who- who does that? It was like a Saturday afternoon. Kids were just gonna go and look through some rubbish. And one guy, this is the most incredible one, one guy, I caught him going through the bins as I came, as I came in. I said, alright, what are you doing? He was one of those homeless guys who likes to remain dignified. Why did you say, what are you doing? Well, because it was my house. I had to go part, I had to squeeze past him. He wasn't in your him. kitchen. He was in our front garden. Oh, was he? Yeah, going through rubbish. He torn the bags open. He was going through it. I said to him, what are you up to? He went, oh yeah, just looking through the stuff. Don't, don't worry, I'll just, I'll, I'll clean it all up afterwards. Just looking for a few odds and ends, blah, 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 blah. I said, oh well, you can take what you want, you know, it's all going away. Yeah, thanks very much, thanks. Yeah. So we went off, right, I didn't think anything of it. I was walking past the shops the following day, there's a little sort of, uh, kind of 7-Eleven, right, I was walking past. I thought, oh, that's interesting, a Gil Scott heroin album for sale. And I looked, I thought, wait a minute, this is all our rubbish. And the guy had set up, like, a little car boot sale outside the 7-Eleven on the pavement. He'd taken our junk, he'd marked on prices. There's, like, an old RAC book from 1976 that had been lying in the house, a Yellow Pages. You know, and he'd marked up the How prices. How much is Yellow he, Pages? So I'm glad you were. What year was 50p, that 50p, I snapped it up. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that's a bargain. <laughs> and, um, it was incredible. He had the cheek of just selling our junk. Outside? En enterprise car. You, you, you did that. What did you used to do? You used uh, to sell flowers. I sold flowers. I yeah. sold, uh, sold fizzy drinks at school. Did you? Yeah. What did you made? It was soda stream, yeah. Yeah. Made, made some, uh... Well, of course, when you were doing your Pilkies making music, your disco, yeah. you used to go into mum's bedroom and find a pair of tights and a cigar. 
Yeah, they, yeah, they'd be prizes. Uh, yeah. Did your dad used to smoke cigars in tights or, or your mum? <laughs> <laughs> Which one of them? He's just gone. Right, look, let's, let's, uh. Yeah, we're educating Ricky. No, no, no. That's, we'll tease him that. Uh, Rockbusters. Well, I think we should play a tune and come back with Rockbusters. Oh, so the show's falling down. We were going so well, and we, it's just the energy, isn't it? The first hour we got through. I'm still uh, in good spirits. Is this, this still good? Is it this I'm show? Enjoying it, yeah. Yeah, good it's still good. Is it? I'll just let me just check because uh, just check what Richard Anderson thinks of it. <laughs> good evening, Anna. <laughs> no, he thinks it's appalling. He, <laughs> no, no, uh, the Dixter thinks it's appalling. So uh, we should what play we, a tune because he can play some music. What's this? Better Aqualung. Oh. Aqualung. Aqualung. Rockbusters next. I like that. That's great, isn't it? Aqualung. Good time's gonna come. Well, Carl, we've got loads of ideas. We've got emails coming in left, right and centre. I think you've caused quite a stir. I think you've turned this show around, to be honest. I'm being honestly. Yeah? No, you've done really well. You're actually acting a bit like a producer, isn't he? Mm. And, mm. uh, you're coming through in your own right. Yeah. Um, we've had a great suggestion, though. We've had we? a great email here. Let me listen, just check. Listen to this, Carl. Uh, let me just check. Listen this to this. From, this is from, uh, Jeff Dunn. He's a big fan of the show and he's just had a genius idea. He's saying, you're moving house, Carl. Why don't Ricky and I come round? We can do a live outside broadcast from your flat. It's we genius. can observe from your kitchen those weirdos that live opposite. Yeah. We can just, maybe just wander around, just see the kind of place that you've got, you know, see, maybe check out your record collection, your clothes, what you've got in the bathroom. It'd be amazing. Your foot on. It'd be like Louis Theroux. Wouldn't it? We'd be Louis Theroux. Come on, Carl, this is a dynamite idea. Nah. Why? I, I, don't, I don't want you coming around making a mess on that. We won't make, make a mess. We won't make a mess. We'll take our shoes off. When, when have I ever made a mess in the studio? Yeah, exactly. No, uh, no, no, no. No, but do you know what I mean? We're not gonna make a mess. What, what, we're not gonna have anything with us. But what's in it for anyone? Well, it's just a fascinating insight into yeah, you. Yeah, but, right, when I see that little Chinese kid across the road who's <laughs> dancing about in his underpants, yeah. that's in the evening, yeah. right? He's not gonna <laughs> be doing that on a Saturday. <laughs> So you'll be disappointed there. Sure. That <laughs> old, that old woman. But you could at least show us the oh, room no, in which he really, dances. Yeah, we say little Chinese kid, he's a 35 year old man, isn't he? Yeah, well. I'll yeah, you don't, you don't, you don't. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, that, that's beside the point, you know, we'll find our own amusement. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't, and the, the w woman downstairs has got a baby and if we make loads of noise and it's, that gets We're stressed out. We're not gonna out. make noise, are we? Just gonna have a conversation in your flat. Have a cup of tea? Yeah, but if we do an OB, we need to get like a car outside with a big aerial on it and well, the parking's bad around our way. What do you mean you have to do a- what do you mean? To do a outside broadcast. Can't they put in an ISDN line just for the day? No, no, no cause it'll make a mess of the wall and I'm, I've, I won't get my deposit back. <laughs> <So> <laughs> we'll leave that. <laughs> Thanks for the idea. You know he's <laughs> going around painting all the little holes, well, uh, to get his deposit back <laughs> in, the, in the wall. <laughs> he wants to get his deposit back. He's probably cost me about 400 quid redecorating. <laughs> 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 Let's remind people, Carl, of the, uh, the prizes for Rockbusters this week. It's right. dynamite stuff. We've got the David Attenborough DVD Nature Collection. We've We've got a number of CDs, The Best of David Bowie, we've got a Madness CD, not quite sure whether that's songs, uh, from the musical or, or their original tunes. Uh, Country Legends, two CDs there of, uh, great country music. Brilliant. And the, uh, remix to XFM compilation. Plus, of course, the big movie prize this week. Um, Hellraiser! Hellraiser! If you haven't seen it already, then I assume you <laughs> have never seen a film before. <laughs> Because <laughs> I don't know if there's anyone who hasn't seen Hellraiser. <laughs> but obviously you have to be above 18 to join. Uh, Come to on then. Play the competition, Come on so, How um, long would you want to be around for? Is this just for the... Just for the show. Couple of hours. Two hours. Did you just get the desk in there? Mm. A live OB. We could check out the futon, we could sing we it's crazy. Check the futon, right? Yeah. Oh, you might have sold that by but now. But we could have it? someone come round and buy it live on air. Yeah. Yeah. Think about it. Think about it. Think about it. It's great. Uh, great what's... Uh, how, did, how did Graceland start? Does that... <laughs> That was, that was his normal house and then he took <laughs> over. <laughs> <laughs> right, anyway, Rockbusters. <laughs> yeah, go on. I, I give a cryptic clue. Yeah. And, <laughs> and a letter and it makes up a band. He right? never said the word cryptic a few months ago. I love it. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I feel it's like our own little Eliza Doolittle. Yes. <laughs> right, even Richard will like this one. Mm hmm. Um, here we go then. First one. There's I three of them. Go on. And you email in. If this doesn't turn Dicky round, nothing will. Right. This is an email only competition. Email only. Um, right, here's the first one. Uh, initial is B, so it's B. a band starting with B. Okay. And the cryptic clue is, I don't like them birds, uh, they shouldn't be allowed in this area. I don't like them birds, they shouldn't be allowed in this area. Next one. Right, the next one. Uh, he doesn't like women, yet he's got a couple of kids, that's a bit weird. <laughs> Is that a cryptic clue or is that just- <laughs> Is that just a thought, you general know? point? Is that, that's, yeah. That's the cryptic clue. Okay. And the initials there are PD. Okay. And, uh, the last one, 
Uh, oh, I've got that one. That's terrible. That's terrible. Okay, quickly. Oh, <laughs> oh God. And the last one is, uh, oh, that bloke who does... <laughs> <laughs> Come on! <laughs> He's making me laugh. Come on, Carl. Be professional. Right, on. right, the last one. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it, he's making me laugh. Oh, come on, I'll come and read him then. No, 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 Come on, Carl. Right, here we go. They don't do this on <laughs> Blockbusters on TV, do they? No, come right. on. That bloke who does sport on telly. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a little kid, right? Uh, initials DC. Uh, what? Right? Is that, was I'm that the clue? I'm completely confused by that. Was that the clue? Yeah, that bloke who does sport on telly. Yeah. He's got a little kid. Initials DC. Okay, is that a band? Um, what artist? Uh, it's, oh, well, I'm not a gonna tell you. I'm this not gonna is tell a cheese. sandwich. <laughs> is it, what is it? Is it Fine. a band or an artist? Right, so just quickly recap. That's okay. It's, 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 it's a Come D. on, Carl. Right. Come on. Quick, quick recap. The first one is B. I don't think them birds should be around in this area. Right, that's B. Right? <laughs> Second one. He doesn't like women, yet he's got a few kids. It's a bit weird. That's PD. And the final one. <laughs> that bloke who does sport on the telly, he's got a little kid. Right? D. C. All right, and uh, it's Ricky Gervais at xfm.co.uk if you want to enter for uh, Hellraiser. Oh, I tell you what, continue to do a little theme here of like some old stuff people haven't heard of. If you're under thirty, probably never heard of this band. It's also a new thing I want to introduce. Uh, it's uh, it's um, show up Camfield. Camfield right. talks the talk. He doesn't walk the walk. He doesn't play some rock classics on his show because he's scared. I'm going to play the tracks that Camfield's too scared to play. Right. This is Kansas and Carry On Your Wayward Son. All right, Raw Nirvana. Amazing. We we're just talking. We we're getting excited about that. Yeah. You've got an incredible brilliant. voice, yes. And Grohl, Dremin, it's, it's brilliant. You know you're right, the new one from Nirvana. Well, we're, it's time for Educating Ricky Part 2, isn't it? I'm yeah. excited, Carl. I'm gonna learn so much <laughs> from this. What's the choices again? What's right, you've got, uh, you've got left, Still, uh, still keep phoning your answers to, uh, um, Email. Email, sorry, yeah. Uh, the answers to rock busters. busters. Yeah. Right, okay, Educating Ricky Part 2. Um, right. I'm committed to this treatment. Yeah. Is, is one. Oh, I've got to go for that one. Yeah? Yeah. Or oh, the other one is the police are causing a bit of a stare. <laughs> he still says it like it's the best thing he's ever come up with, which yeah. way it is. It could be. Right, go on in. I'm committed to this treatment. Right. Do you know the saying? Oh, is it just sayings now? Uh Are they all sayings this week? No, 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 they're not. Okay. No, the other one isn't. Uh Frog in your throat? <laughs> The saying, there's a frog in your throat. Yep. I assume it. it's uh, when you uh, croak a little bit, you sound no. like a <coughs> frog. No, no. Right, might, might say, seem a bit weird, this one, right? But years ago... Oh, yeah. Um... So, what, what is that clue, committed to this treatment? It's about frogs kermitted. Kermit. Ker <laughs> <laughs> Probably works better with a K and an yeah. ER written down. Well, also, if you'd pronounced it committed. Yeah. But uh, not committed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> committed to this treatment! <laughs> right, go on then. That's right, genius. Uh, so, yeah. Well, uh, what? You, get, you go to the doctors and you go with throat certain a bit. Right. And what they did ages ago. Ages ago? What year was this approximately? We are going back quite a bit with this oh, one. Oh, okay. Go on. Um, and the doctor would say, <laughs> uh, <laughs> You got it history. Imagine years ago. Go on. Um, and the doctor would say, right, keep your, keep your mouth open and need to look at your tonsils. And the jaw would ache a bit because because they weren't as quick back then because they didn't have the technology and stuff and they'd sure. have to like stare at it and study it and stuff. Mm. And like they get an achy jaw, right? Keeping their mouth open. Yeah. Like you get, you know, yeah. you jaw eat a Mars yeah. bar yeah. or yeah. whatever yeah. it's yeah. Like, yeah. So, um, they, they'd sat there and they used to always close the mouth and be, it used to annoy the doctor. Yeah. Right? Sure. So what they did, yeah. they used to get a toad. Right. And put it in the mouth. Rubbish. <laughs> okay. Keep, Rubbish. They keep talking. Keep talking. And, um, that way they couldn't close the mouth because either they'd squash it. Right. Or, apparently you're not allowed to, uh, lick a toad's back. <laughs> <laughs> so the doctor would have them for breaking the law? <laughs> no, 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 but it's poisonous. Right? A toad's back. You should never lick a toad's back. Or, or, or put it in your mouth, really. Oh, just, 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 it, just stop no, for no, a second. Wait, wait, wait. What, what? Can I just ask one question? Go on, yeah, just go on. Ask one question. I've got a few, but no, go I'm, on. I, sure. M my initial thought is, it sounds like a brilliant bit of, of sort of medical uh, knowledge there. It's a great yeah. idea. Yeah. My only thought is, how does the doctor see past the toad? Yeah. At your tonsils? What's he actually looking at with the mouth open? Surely the toad is, is in it the way. Isn't around in the way? It, it didn't say. No. Uh, sorry, and uh, my, my question, my first question is, was this on the internet? Yeah. Yeah, okay. 
uh, Carl, that is bollocks. <laughs> that is, I mean, uh, <laughs> Well, all right then. Let's turn this round. Where does the saying, uh, you got a frog in your throat come uh, from? Probably because you sound a bit croaky. Probably that. <laughs> probably because you sound a little bit like a frog when <laughs> you've got a sore throat. <laughs> Carl, did you not question it just for a moment when you read it? Just for a second, didn't you think, that seems an odd approach. Firstly, why a frog, of yeah. all the different because species- Because it's poisonous, it's poisonous. A toad- no, So a toad, so it's a toad right. as well. Yeah, well, that it worked, I'm committed, worked- No, 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 I was gonna change it to, uh, have you heard the news, Toad Day? <laughs> <laughs> but I went with, I went with the frog. <laughs> Right, so, right. So, so, so that's rubbish. So that's rubbish. Next, um, <laughs> can I have, um, <laughs> let's play a tune, let's come up with the last one. Oh. oh, can I just play? No, just play it, just play it. Yeah? Yo, Carl. <laughs> I have to thank my, uh, mate Dave who sent me an incredible four disc compilation. That was one of the tunes on there. It looks uh, professional, it's amazing. It's incredible, the effort yeah. Oh, he's gone to too commendable. much effort. Uh, Ben Queller, uh, it's a track called In Other Words from his album Sha Sha. Open wide? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> Oh, you don't know. You've actually got a frog in your throat. Uh, I, I didn't get there. I put it in there. <laughs> That's the most ludicrous story I've ever heard, Carl. Why don't you think when you read these things? I, d I think there's always going to be a bit of truth in all of these. I mean, that fella called up, didn't he, and said, um, he said, I'm not sure about the, you know, putting a frog in your throat if you've got, ton you know, problems with your tonsils or whatever. But he said, years ago, um, if someone had toothache, yeah. they'd get hold of a frog and strap yeah. it to the face. Yeah, sure. So maybe down the line, you know, maybe they did. Yeah. Maybe they did. Uh, 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 I think Caligula made what is emperor uh, a horse and emperor as well. But I mean, you know, it doesn't go on. Um, Dick Anderson's been back in touch. Excellent. Um, so I think so. Obviously, we've turned him round. Well, he loves it now. He's been he? tuning in. He, he says, loves um, it now. He says, Ricky, thanks for a really forgettable two hours of radio. I think I'll spend the time next week counting my feet. That's from Richard Anderson. So, uh, we've turned him round. We've no, do you know where the phrase counting my feet comes from? Well, in the olden days, right, and I'm talking ages ago, when you really loved something, yeah. you used to, as a, as a sign of respect, like say a radio show, mm. you'd count your feet. Mm. And mm. that's where that comes from, that's where Carl. It comes from. Well, what, what about the, uh, the frog thing with a, with, a po with a poisonous back? It's rubbish. That's true. No, the po toe toes have um, uh, the, the secretions in there. The, the, why? The, the, why? Why? But they didn't put it in people's mouths. No, so, why? well, I'll tell you why. When a a, 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 a badger or a, a heron tastes the toad, it's horrible. Ugh. The toad might die, but it, it's for the good of the species, because then, think how many toads, like, looking like that, a heron could eat in its lifetime. So, the fact that one toad sacrificed itself, all those other toads in that heron's manner but, will be but safe. why, why, I mean, you know, we, we've talked about animals a lot. On the show, right? Yeah. And when God made a toad, sure, right? right? Okay. Well, so on, I'm gonna stop you there. I'm gonna stop you there. Straight don't, away. Don't. Just let him carry on. Right. Okay. Like, there's there's annoying things out there. You know, jellyfish is a big problem with me. I don't understand why <laughs> what they do in the sea and stuff. Mm -hmm. Right. All right. But we'll we'll leave them. God right? we'll, we won't, me, but go on. We won't we won't talk about jellyfish no. with the toad, right? Um, if it's to protect itself. Yeah. Right, now no, say- it's to itself, it's to protect his species. No, 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 yeah, but that, surely, right, if, if the toad had a choice, if God said, right, what I'm gonna do for you here, um, you can have something like a lobster's got claws, big claws to have a fight, <laughs> or I can give you something that if someone's having a go at you, you've gotta try and persuade them to lick you back <laughs> as, as a defence. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what use is, right, oh, right. God's a well, I, t I tell you why. What is God? The up fact to? that there are still toads around is a testament to that defence working. That's all I'm going to say. Okay, if the toad had died out, you'd have a point. But they're still around. It works. All right. And all right. don't start slagging God off. <laughs> He's got a lot on his plate. He, I mean, he, basically, I think he took on too much. <laughs> <laughs> Particularly in one week. Exactly. It was crazy. <laughs> Danger High Voltage, Electric 6, XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant. Carl's getting all flustered because I put elastic band around his head. And we've had a definition of- Well, uh, hang on a second, the because there's an update to that, Rick. Go on. Um, we did just have, uh, one, uh, definition here of, uh, a frog in the throat. Apparently this has come from some, uh, internet site, so who knows, uh, how convincing it is. But it says, frog in the throat meaning suffering from temporary hoarseness, needing to clear the throat. Origin from the old English frogger meaning hoarseness. That's from Chris. Now that sounds slightly suspect to me. Why? But, uh, frogger? I mean, it, it seems odd that it would derive from that when it so clearly appears to be 
<laughs> you sound like a frog when you when you have a sore throat. Yeah, but 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 the word frog could mm. come from frogger because it sounds I like it. I think it wasn't frogger a game you could play on the yeah, uh, yeah on the spectrum. spectrum. That's a great yeah, game. Yeah. But yeah. listen, hang on, there's an update to that because uh, just to well, the common point. frog, of course, Rana Temporara. That's the Latin name. Well, you, your toad is Buffo Buffo. Right. You may be trying to show off, but I think <laughs> you're about to embarrass yourself as Go well on. because you've been slagging off young Carl. Yeah. It says here, another email, it doesn't tell us who it's from. Although it's hard to believe now, at one time, medieval physicians believed that the secretions of a frog could cure a cough if they were coated on the throat of the patient. Yep. That in itself yeah. sounds repulsive, but what makes the idea even worse is the application of the secretions. Instead of painting the treatment on, something which may also have seemed uh, rational, a live frog was placed into the mouth of the sufferer where it remained until the physician decided that the treatment was complete. Right. Uh, apparently Shakespeare's son-in-law, that's a question mark, I don't know what that means. Anyway, it's no wonder that today a froggy or croaky attempt at speech is said to be a frog in your throat. <laughs> so, <clears throat> you can see that what's happened there is Carl's misread or been slightly misinformed about uh, a medieval practice. In a sense, you're both winners, just for taking part. <laughs> 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 what's your yeah. final one, Carl? Right, the final story <laughs> is, um, the police are causing a bit of a stare. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. Um, it's about this fella. Uh, I think it's in England somewhere. Yeah. Don't know when it happened, but, uh... Literally ages ago, or...? Basic, well, it's when, I think, it's when they were trying to crack down on, like, drunken people walking about in the street. Oh, yeah. And they found this Saturday. fella. Saturday, big Saturday, that one. <laughs> and, uh, found this fella, and, uh, all the local people were saying, oh, look at him wandering around, he's, he's drunk and what have you. That's not right, get the police in. He got arrested and that, and they got him in the court, and, uh, the judge was there, and he says, uh, so, you know, what's all this... What's going on? What are you doing wandering about when you've had a drink? You know the rules. Mm. Uh, you shouldn't be doing that. You had a glazed expression on your face. Uh, blah, blah, blah. What do you have to say for yourself? Uh, he only, he only had a glass eye. So he had two glass eyes? No, he had one. But that okay. was, th th they, they were about to sort of lock him up. Was he a bit pissed up as well? Well, he was, he was pretty livid. <laughs> but was he also drunk with a glass eye? No, no, that's oh, the right. weird thing. He right. wasn't even, he hadn't even had a drink. So they just thought, because he had a weird stare. Because, because his eyes were all glazed. Yeah. Well, uh, well, where'd you get this from? Why are you telling me this? <laughs> 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 no, but why are you telling me this? I don't, I don't, I mean, thank you, because it's, you know, killed a couple of minutes, but why is this educating me? What are you, t what are you telling me because here? Because the, the, there's a bit of a thing there, a bit of a fable, that don't always judge a book by its cover. Yeah? So, the guy, he hadn't even had a drink. He's probably just been shopping. Yeah. Uh, walking down the street and everyone's like getting involved, like what's he doing? He I shouldn't... don't, hang on, I don't understand. He's walking down the street, happens to have a glass eye. He was doing nothing else to suggest he was drunk. You don't pick people up just cause they, their eye looks like oh, the eye. But even like... if it happened, why are you telling me? With no, with no particular detail. Oh. I know this, but they were gonna get It's not people... enough information. I know, yeah. No, oh. th th there's a bit of a lesson there, educating Ricky, just, you know, just watch what you say. Uh, don't always jump to conclusions. Just... I, 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 the, the only education I can take from that is that, um, if I ever do become a policeman, I shouldn't just arrest people because they look a bit drunk. I should just <laughs> tap their eye with a pen <laughs> and go, goes, Oh, okay, on you on go. You go. Oh. <laughs> on you go, yeah. Guys, can I just stop you there? I'm just gonna email Richard Anderson and tell him I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Right, listen, we're running out of time and that. Um, oh, we've got the where did the phrase we've got, frog in the throat come from? We've got, we've we've got it here, it's been, it's been told. Well, there's three. Can we play a tune and come up with that? Have well, we got anything lined up? Uh, yeah, we've got the song with the story in it. Come on, okay. Carl, let's do something. Quick, play a record. Song with the story in it. But never mind that, just, they're listening. We, this, we discussed this off air, come on. Play a record. Right, play it. It's King for, King's, King's. It's a song with a good story in it. you got to listen to the words. <laughs> Carl, what was that? That was your little song that's, with the story. Uh, that's another it? little feature that we do every Saturday. <laughs> Uh, little so song. make sure you tune in. <laughs> <laughs> it's a uh, it's a song that's got a good story in it. There's a lot of music about these. What's days that story that, about then? What's that, that story you about? You don't know what they're going on about. Whereas that classic from the Kinks called Lola. Yeah, what's it about? Um, I'd listened to it for the first time properly this morning. Yeah. And what I've worked out from it is, is a fellow who goes out for a normal Saturday night out. He's yeah. in Soho. Yeah. He's having a he's having a Coca Cola or whatever. And he, uh, yeah. he sees, he sees this woman, he thinks, yeah, she's all right. Yeah. Won't mind a bit of that. So he wanders over, and he sort of gets to talking to her. He looks at her, and she's got a great figure, nice face and all that. Lovely knob. And, uh, and she speaks, and he yeah. goes, oh, God. Got a bit of a bloke's a voice. Yeah. <laughs> got a <laughs> yeah. bit of a voice like a bloke. But he thought, but, you know, that's her only down point. Sure. So yeah. he's, he dances around with her, and I think he sits on his knee, I think he said. Yeah. Anyway, it turns out it's a fella. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, a sobering yeah. lesson. Yeah. Um, um, what do you take from that? 
look away, sort of. If you if you think you might be talking to uh, a, a bloke, bloke in dress, dress, just look at it. Adam, he's sort of Adam's apple. I'll <laughs> <Okay. laughs> probably have a hairier ass than, than a woman. Yeah, I think you've gone too far away then, though. <laughs> I think you've already- I think you're- <laughs> you're already getting too close. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit late to pull out. <laughs> <laughs> no, pun intended, definitely. There was a pun intended. Oh, was it? Alright, was it? Yes. Oh, Alright, alright. Okay, well don't be disgusting then. <laughs> right. Okay, right. Um, the- the, uh, results of, um- We, what, we ain't got a winner for the first time. Yes, uh, we, we have. We've, we've got done loads. This for We've got loads of winners. No, we haven't. We've done the, this feature for three weeks. This is the first time I've, um, I've managed to sort of- What? Well, let's go through them then. They what have they the got answers. wrong? The first one. The right, first one? What the was first the clue? Well, 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 hang on, let's just- let's, just, let's do them in reverse order for a second. Okay. So what's- what's the last one? The last one, the clue was, that bloke does, uh, does sport on the telly and he's got a little kid. What's that? That's Destiny's Child. Des, who does ITV Sport, oh, that's has got terrible, a tiny man. child, right? No, that's, they, that's cut, fine, yeah, they got okay, that. That's, 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 what's the, what, what's the, what's the middle one? Right, the middle one. Child. The second one was, yeah. uh, he doesn't like women, yet he's got a couple of kids, that, that's a bit weird. Yeah. Right? That was PD, that was Puff Daddy. That is offensive. Go on. But that, it's not Puff Daddy, it's Puff Daddy. And he's not even called that anymore, he's called P Diddy. Well. Okay, yeah. fair <laughs> enough. But they got that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, um, and if- so if I'm being tight, these lot are as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, tight means being something in Manchester. Go on. Right, and the first- the first one that they, they're having problems with, I don't think them birds should be uh, allowed in this They've area. They've got it. Boy zone. zone. It's not- it's not boy zone. It's- what's the clue again? I don't think them birds should be allowed in this area. That is perfect. A boy zone. No birds. No women. No women, yeah, birds, right? A boy zone. Sorry, Carl. If that isn't the answer, their clue is better than yours. That is brilliant. What was your- boy zone, it works perfectly. What's your answer then? Bangles. <laughs> what? I have no idea what that means. Like seagulls, so you- you don't want them in this area, so you're banning them. Bangles. <laughs> <laughs> Well, give it to Boy Zone, because Boy Zone's better. Then it's supposed to be loud in this area, it's a Boy Zone. I think zone. we should have a rollover. <laughs> Carl <laughs> beat them. Carl beat them. You have to use his logic, surely. But there's works. You can't do what am I thinking. No, that's not what I'm thinking. It perfectly. It works perfectly. I think you've got to give it to the, the ones that got the, the Boy Zone. Well, how about, right, because they didn't actually get into my, my head. That I'm well, out, thinking, heaven right? forbid. How about we just keep back the David Attenborough, and they can have, I'll chuck in the L Razor. Right? <laughs> okay. Uh, most and, of you. And, uh, <laughs> Blondie album and the Madness yeah, one. Yeah, okay. Pick a winner at random. Pick Steve. a winner, Steve. Uh, I'm gonna give it to Paul Sloman, who got those answers, and he also says, P.S. Carl, you're a moron. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I'm Brilliant. giving that to Paul, and uh, good luck to him. <laughs> right, well. He's got a crazy night uh, well. tonight. If we can rush these over to him, he's uh, got a cracking yeah. uh, so yeah. Saturday night. Well, well, if I'm a moron, I might get your address wrong when I send them to you. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Coming yeah. right back at you, Paul. Yeah. <laughs> right. Do you want to play a song? Is this oh, I was annoyed, because well, I didn't get wild. banned goals. A song from, uh, a song for the la ladies. I think we seem to have missed this a lot of weeks, but so this sure. is- uh, I've been wanting to play this for like to for forget things and that. This <laughs> is a band at Frente, who kind of came and went and oh, no yeah. one was particularly interested, but they did this- do this lovely acoustic version of the New Order tune, Bizarre Love Triangle, oh, and right. this just shows you how incredible the melodies and the- and the words and everything are. Brilliant, I'm uh, fine. New Order, just, uh, play this card. Good night. Bye bye. Is bye. this in the week? Do you reckon Richard Anderson will be back next week? Yeah, Richard Anderson will not miss this show. Excellent. Every time I think I, I, I think I might have worked out. What, what, what is, he's, he's walking backwards, it's all filmed backwards, but he's singing forward. Now, the only way I can work out they've done it without CGI in it and cheating with the lips is that he had to learn, learn it, to it backwards, it backwards and did it sort of like bit by bit. Did he do that? He was on Zoe's show like about a week ago or oh, something. Oh, so he, he sang it backwards. So he learned phrases and they filmed that. Yeah, yeah. But he didn't learn the whole song, did he? They must have. He couldn't possibly have learned the whole song. He must have like stopped it and. I don't know. I it's a great video though. They always do a good video. No, it's very good, very good indeed. So it was, uh, yeah, The Scientist on XFM 104.9. Rick Gervais with me, Steve Merchant Hello. and Carl Pilkerton. I had a bit of good news this morning. Go Rick. on. Um, I was on the tube coming down, and, uh, I don't, uh, I don't want to sound arrogant, I don't want to sound pushy, but, um, I was at Green Park, and I'm fairly certain, Rick, it's not 100% corroborated, I'm fairly certain that a woman pinched my arse. So what do you think of that? Yes. There's, there's a lot of pop, uh, pickpockets around Green no, Park, no, no, so no, 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 my wallet was still there. 
Really? But even if it wasn't, you know, that would have been money well spent. But, <laughs> the, but, 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 the, but the wallet was still there, so how, <laughs> what do you think of them apples? Eh? So, what did you just pinch off? I don't- I can't confirm it at this stage, uh, exactly what happened, but it certainly felt like a pinch. I looked round, there By was- a woman. There was a woman behind me. Right. She was fairly old. She was, I think she's probably in her mid thirties. Right. Um, kind of reddish hair. Right. Uh, I don't know if she's listening. Right. But uh, she knows where I am. And, um, so I don't know how to proceed really, Rick. I don't know if it's worth putting up some posters <laughs> around the Green Park area. Well, what you could Just do to try and corroborate well, it. If you saw a woman pinch the lanky you, guy's arse, no, please No, you could probably get in, uh, a contact with British Rail and look, go back over their CC exactly thing, CCTV cameras, yeah, and then they could probably zoom in and you know so identifying sort of birthmarks or <laughs> exactly. she might have been holding some. Then I could hire a private eye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, again, money well spent. <laughs> well, so, uh, so there you go. You know, I'm just so, saying. I mean, I'm just saying maybe the you know maybe things are looking up. Things it's getting are towards Christmas. D- the worm has turned. Hey? I don't. I, I mean, you know, it's a little uh, sexy story to get the show going. <laughs> it's, it's but, so what do you make of that, then, Carl? We're looking at that, Carl. You're quite damning. Um. What's your answer? Well, I mean, you're quite a, quite a tall fella. Sure. So, she must have really wanted to sort of reach up and <laughs> and have a pinch. Hmm. Do you know well, what you mean? think she, she was a dwarf? dwarf. She, she did it with her teeth. He didn't say she was a dwarf. No, no. But Steve's taller than you know his arse. Yeah, but his arse here. isn't six foot nine, is it? Well, his arse is about three foot off the floor. F- four foot. What? Four foot off off the floor. Uh, no, I don't think so. About three. She'd have to be a midget to have to reach up to pinch Steve's ass. He is very tall, but yeah. I don't know what your point is there, Carl. You're just you're just trying to you're, you know you're just uh, yeah, I I think maybe just a little bit jealous. Just a little bit uh, of jealousy. Well, do you know what happened to me on the way in? Go on. A homeless person called me a dickhead. <laughs> How did he know? <laughs> <laughs> do you know him? Is right, that why? He's a local. He's like the local big Ne'er-do-well. big issue fella. Oh yeah. Yeah. And he know he knows me. He sees me walking up and down the oh, street. Oh, that's how he knew you. Yeah. Right. So um, so I normally have a have a bit of a chat with him in that, and I walk past him, and um, <laughs> we're, we're, you know I can I can be a little bit cheeky with him because I've been cheeky with him in the past with stuff. Um, you pinched his arse. No, no, <laughs> just you know saying stuff like God, you're always there. I mean, you got home to go to and. Uh- <laughs> Stuff like that. Yeah, no, just he, breaking the ice. Just breaking the ice. Go no, on. He yeah. knows, and he laughed at that, right? Yeah, last time, yeah, so I thought yeah. I can be a bit cheeky, right? So he goes, uh, he goes, do you, want a, do you want a big issue? I said, nah. He said, come on, I've got loads of them, right? So I, I sort of said, oh, w- when I was a kid, and I used to do a free paper around the free papers one. I said, just put them in the bin and go home. <laughs> right? And he went, yeah, but how am I going to get any money doing that, you dickhead? <laughs> you see, yeah. I can see his point. Mm-hmm. He is homeless and having to sell newspapers to get fifty p or a quid or whatever. Yeah, uh, and, and sometimes I treat him right. And today I didn't have any money. I had a takeaway last night, and I normally give them a quid. And I felt bad not being able to do that because I didn't have any money on me last right, night. Right. I couldn't look him in the eye. Did you explain this to the homeless person the traumas of the takeaway <laughs> without the tip? <laughs> Did you explain that, you know, y- you've had it hard as well. I yeah. go, look, you don't I had th- food delivered to my warm flat. Yeah. It was Yeah, a you don't know what that's like. You don't know what the trauma is because you can't have food delivered to your flat because you haven't got one. So please don't look at me like that. You should have said. But most people ignore him. At least I gave him a bit of acknowledgement and sort yeah, of- Yeah, took the- took I, the mick. Yeah. I didn't think I was. I just was being mm. friendly. Yeah. Mm. No, I know. You gotta be careful with the homeless because I- this is- I, this is true and this is- I- you know when the clocks went- was it- the clocks went back recently? Yeah. So you got an extra hour in bed? Yeah. And um, I was at cash point with a friend of mine and there was a homeless person sat by the cash point <laughs> and um, was, you know, we were getting some money out and she said spare some change and my friend's like, oh, he's a bit awkward. He's just trying to make conversation with her. He went, oh, clocks go back. Extra hour in bed. Oh no. I gave her two quid. I felt so bad. <laughs> Oh, he didn't God. do it intentionally. He didn't no, realise what he'd said. I just know, making just conversation. Bumbling. It's uh, tricky making conversation with the homeless because there's so many areas you ca- you've got to avoid. You know, know what was on the telly. Yeah. You know. Although I get recognised by homeless people and they are, well, are they, I don't know where. Well, you've got to remember that's pretty much your demographic. Rick. <laughs> yeah. You yeah, know, pe- people window. who watch TV through the window in Dixon's. Yeah, in Dixon's. <laughs> yeah, there was a big well, the yeah. well, they, they can smell the alcohol on you. They <laughs> think you're one of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've had to cut down on that. I've all oh, been really good with this training thing. The boxing. Uh, oh, oh, play a record and I'll tell you about that. I had my first week of training. I'm, I'm in trouble. I'm struggling. What do you want to play? Oh, we've got a bit of, uh, have we? Stone Roses, classic. Feeder, come back around. XFM 104.9. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Alright? Uh-huh. Yeah, so I, st- I had my first week of training for this, um, 
charity boxing. Um, for those people who don't know, I'm, I'm fighting Grant Bovey, uh, Anthony Turner's husband. Um, it's, it sounds arbitrary, but it's actually because he's, uh, at 41 and about my weight, a bit taller, I think. But, uh, and we've never done it before, but, um, no, it'd be, it'd be fun. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Battling someone for charity. <laughs> yes. Um, no, but, um, it, 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 it's, and I can't believe my luck, because I've, you know, I've been a fight fan for like 30 years, and, um, and they took me shopping, they bought me all the gear, and, uh, the training's great. It's really hard. I mean, it's, uh, I imagine it'd be really hard, and it's probably slightly harder than I imagined. And the only bit I like, so the, 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 the I, I, I don't like all the exercise and all the stuff you've got to do. I like the bits that look a bit like something I've seen in a Rocky film. Right, sure, You know, sure. we did that thing with the, uh, the string along the ring, and I have to pop up and punch and that. Right. That was great. Right, nice. Uh, skipping's not bad. I'm trying to get good at that. I like that ball that you go... Yeah, yeah. Are you any good at that? Is that uh, I'm getting, getting good at it. Uh-huh. Well, and what's well. that teaching you, that particular thing? It's just uh, the rhythm, is it? Uh, it's, it's rhythm, and, of course, your arm are up for that long, so it, it, you've got to keep your guard up all the time. Yeah. So that teaches you to keep and your you arms up. And you were, uh, up at six this morning, you broke some raw eggs into a cup and <laughs> you ran up the steps of the town hall, didn't you? I know. Well, with loads of people following me, and I shouted, Bovey! <laughs> at <laughs> exactly. the top. No, I'm not going mad, I'm not going mad, just, sure. just, 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 you know, once every, you know, every other day. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm struggling now, I've, 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 I woke up today and I, it was like I'd been hit by a car. Yeah. Just everything aches, so the muscles you haven't used. But, um, anyway, I had a meeting, uh, the first time with the, with the people, the program makers, because they're following me for a month and everything, and Grant as well. Um, and they said, oh, um, uh, you'll need a sort of nickname, just for a laugh. And I went, oh, what's Grant using? And they said, oh, I think he's gonna use gorgeous Grant Bovey or Grant. I went, oh, I don't know, um, oh, gosh, I better go, I better go against that. Um, what about, um, Ricky Gippo Gervais? Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, uh, 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 yeah, so, uh, anyway, I had a freaking with Frank Maloney meeting the next day, and, uh, it's sort of, uh, uh, you know, you've got to do this nickname, and the bloke said, oh, I checked out that name, you can't call yourself Gippo. I went, well, of course I can't, <laughs> I was joking. He went, well, I said, well, it's racist, I was joking, I was making a joke about me, but, and then he went, oh, I don't know. And then, uh, I went down to get the, um, buy all the gear from this shop. They'd have the dressing game made? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I was picking all the stuff, I was going, oh look, that's like Naz War. Oh look, that's like Ali War in the... And I'm going, I'll have that, I'll have that, picking all the gear and everything. And, um, there was a couple of boxers down there, sort of like looking at me, thinking, who's that fat bloke taking yeah. that boxing at 40? And, uh, I said, oh, I was, not And, uh, bloke went, oh, yeah, how are you doing? I went, oh, yeah, so how long have you been in the game? He said, I've been boxing 20 years. So how many fights you had? He said, about 40. And I said, oh, yeah, help me, I've got to think of a nickname. And I thought, I said, uh, I thought, uh, Ricky Balboa Gervais. He went, right. I went, or Ricky Marciano Gervais. He looked at me and went, what about Ricky Martin? <laughs> <laughs> oh uh, dear! Absolutely justified. Yeah, I, I, I'm not respected yet in the boxing world. <laughs> no, sure. But I mean, it's only a matter of time. Once well, they I see think they're going to go see your fight, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's gonna change. So, uh, that'd have be you good. actually, have you actually punched anyone yet? Have you actually- Not any, no, no, I've punched, punched I've punched pads, and I've punched the, uh, the bag, and I've sort of sparred and that. I know, you're and gonna get a chance to well, punch Well, someone. as I suspected, um, my, my punching power's alright, but my fitness is, I mean, it felt like I was smoking. Yeah. You know, but there's, b you know, bits of lung that haven't been, had oxygen in them for 20 years. Yeah. And it's ridiculous. And also, because it's not only it's being filmed, but there's the other fighters there that are ridiculous. They're like machines, mm, right? Mm. And it's that thing, I go, I can go, right, I can, I can come out on top, but die now of a heart attack, but never give up. Or yeah. I can sit down and go, I'm sorry, I'm, I yeah. feel ill. And I chose that one, and of course they took the mitt. Well, of course. But absolutely. I mean, you know, soon. Uh, you know, as I said, I haven't got the respect yet of the boxing <laughs> fraternity, <laughs> but- and How long have you got then before- Four uh, weeks. Okay, so, yeah. and, and do they think that they can turn you around health-wise in that time? Uh, n no, they're being really out on Zimmer. No, they're gonna, they're gonna, the you know, they're, they're gonna teach me the ba basics and see how it goes, you know, right. but I mean, I'm, you know, And I'm each round is four seconds, is that right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, two four second yeah, rounds. With, with a yeah. two hour break in between <laughs> each one. <laughs> <laughs> Sit down um, meal. So, uh, give them a number, I want, I want serious suggestions of my fighting name. Nothing insulting, so what we can actually use. Well, let's give out the, the email, that's always the easiest. Yeah, Ricky exactly, Dodger yeah. at xfm.co.uk. What's the number, Carl? Um, oh eight seven hundred eight hundred one two three four. And it doesn't have to be in the middle, it could be at the beginning, like... Okay. <laughs> the Rage. Okay. Ricky, yeah, yeah, Ricky yeah. the Rage. Ricky Gervais the Tits. <laughs> 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 sure. Ricky the Man, rest, player yeah. record. <laughs>
Big it was a good day, yeah. Ice Cube. Yeah. Uh, it talks to me about my life. Yeah. In the <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A <laughs> no. couple of emails are already coming in. Rush. They're flooding in, Rick. Yeah. Inevitably. Uh, there's boxing name suggestions for you. This is one from Matt, I think. Uh, he's given a couple, actually. Ricky the Pudding Gervais. <laughs> yeah, uh, Ricky Big Mac Gervais. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, the, there's a theme here. Ricky Pasty Gervais. <laughs> <laughs> the Pasty. I quite like the Pasty. That's it comes great, the Pasty. It? <laughs> as, as Carl said, he said, the thing is, if you have a really good nickname, it's embarrassing when you lose, whereas if you just call yourself yourself, it's not so embarrassing when you lose. Carl, this is doing no good for my <laughs> ego. <laughs> do you know what I mean? If you have, like, Killer Gervais. Yeah, and then you end up, like, vomiting, yeah. choking on your own vomit upside down, exactly. hanging out the ring. What happens if you win? Do you have to do something Whereas, properly? there goes the pasty being stretchered off <laughs> in the first two minutes. <laughs> Yeah! It's not such a problem. <laughs> there he is, being lightly basted. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and chuck down a mine. <laughs> what do you mean, what do I have to do? Say if you- say if you beat Grant, say- Yeah. Say if that- if that happened. Yeah. yeah right. Um, <laughs> you, what- what happens next? What do you mean, what happens next? What? Do you think, oh, this is a- a contention fight for no, the no, big no. one? No, 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 but do they- <laughs> they, 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 yeah. Well, th then we make Ricky too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but, you know, <laughs> <laughs> Do you know if they're planning on making more money? Because it's for comic relief, isn't it? So what happens on the night? No, it's it, no, it's for a charity of our Comic choice. relief would make sense. Yeah, <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. Whatever, right? Yeah, it was last time. I think it was last time. Is it sport we're... relief? It's not sport. It was relief. last time. Oh, right. Yeah, but this is. I think this is a program where. The... And, and how do we? Sorry, how does this? How do you make money for charity from this? Do we? Do we pay to? To sort of for how many punches to the head you're going to take? Or no, no. I just. How think long you're going to last? I assume the BBC donate. Money or someone or a sponsor or whatever. So I don't know. Just right. donate because it's actually a program. This is more about a program with a, I think I see, a, I a see. charity angle. So uh, yeah. So as if if you get like killed, there's more money and food to go around. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> but no. I mean, the thing is, what's the next step? Because if they go like, right, yeah, well done, you've won. Thank you very much. Well, Carl, what do you expect? That, the, that it's winner stays on? <laughs> yeah. Like, in a fair, <laughs> where I go out there and I'd let people right, punch me in the- Right, Bird and Manning. Yeah, yeah. And, and, then, and then my twin gets up. Yeah. What, what do, what, it's just a- it's a program. He's it's not like, gonna turn it's, pro. It's like faking it. Yeah, but what's the point if it's not gonna go anywhere? Well, uh, a what, a Sorry, him fighting Grant Bovey in a ring is not entertainment enough. <laughs> What's the matter with you, Carl? That's gonna get his face pummeled in. That's gonna be no, hilarious. But, right, when I did boxing at the youth club, once right. when he did boxing, he fought once. He fought a little weak kid because <laughs> it was his first day. Battered him. Next week it was someone else's turn, and he got battered and he left. <laughs> yeah, I said right, I've had enough. But there was, there was <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, there was a ladder there that I had to work, right? And I decided after the sort of the, the first step, I thought it's not for me this. Mm. Yeah. But if you win, it's all kind of like right. Well, yeah, the world's your oyster. But it's a program. It's just a one-off program, isn't it? It's it's like it is like you got to treat it like faking it. Yeah, but faking it, right? That little gay fella who ended up being a doorman, he's actually doing that as a proper job now or something. He loved it so much. <laughs> Do you seriously think I have any intentions of getting into the fight game and leaving <laughs> entertainment behind? Well, what's the point then? <laughs> what do, What do you mean? What's the point in what What's the point in watching television? It's entertainment. Or educational. I, I watch it to sort of soak in. Well, this is educational. I'm learning a lot. I am actually learning a lot, and it's. I can't believe my luck. I've got professionals telling me, you know, hopefully how to lose weight and punch hard. That's just fun. It's like like having golf lessons. Right. But say, I mean, here's an example. Go it's on. A, it's a nice way to plug it. We've got Rockbusters coming up in about ten minutes or something, right? <laughs> Now, Look forward to that. <laughs> people, yeah. people email in and they don't just do it for fun, they do it because they know they've got some good prizes lined up. Right. So they're doing it because it gets them something. Yeah, my, my prize is that I've learned something in life. I've gone through an experience and hopefully I'll come out in some way better if I don't get mashed. That's it. That's uh, the prize. That's why we do anything, isn't it? I think this is si this is an example of you, Carl, is that you give up too easily. Yeah, you, know, and you, you suck up the box you, you, you gave that up straight away. You think there's no point in anything? I did- I did Crusaders for a- I think I, I lasted that out for about four weeks. What's what Crusaders? Well, he was- my mate, right, he uh, <laughs> he was- he, he was religious. Uh-huh. And, I, and I, I'm not, really. Um, but- No, I mean, you believe in ghosts, though, and shadows pushing people off bikes, but go on. But it's the same time, I think I told you once before that I went to the church with this lad because right. I swore and he said he was gonna tell me dad. Yeah. That was <laughs> effing and jeffing. So he said if you come- <laughs> 
<laughs> is that how they get people to church nowadays? I, I love that what kid that, yeah, he hasn't got, got, uh, got the idea of the protection game. No. There's nothing in it for him. Either you turn to religion or I tell your father. <laughs> right, so, uh, so I went to church with him and that, and then the next week he said, I know that was rubbish and you didn't enjoy it. It's when I got kicked out for messing with a tennis ball in the pews, right? I don't think we've heard that, but I don't think we could possibly <laughs> right. go into that now. Summed it up. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> Well, no. No, we, come on. That's we'll it. come back that's, to that. That's, that's, that you okay. had a tennis ball and some pubes. <laughs> no, in the pubes. pubes. In the pubes, pubes right. Yeah. But anyway, so <laughs> I, I went there and I said, I don't think much of this church thing. It's a bit boring. <laughs> um, Sorry. And so you went to church and you ended up in the Crusades. <laughs> No, the, the it's called, it's the called crusade? the Crusaders. What it is, it's meant to be the fun part of religion for kids. Uh -huh. right? right. And my mate said, oh, you want to come along? It's, uh, you know, you go on a Friday night yeah. and, uh, do it on a Sunday as well. Brilliant. Right. So I went on the Friday night, it was brilliant. They had Sabutio, <laughs> uh, played table tennis in this dead big old house. And what do they do right. at the end? Say, so, I hope you enjoy yourself. Remember God <laughs> gave you yeah. all this. Well, yeah. it's sort of, you know, enjoy the simple things in life. You don't need computer games. You can play, uh, table tennis and, that, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. talk with your friends. Yeah. And blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, that's all right. That's I think you'd right. be happy in a Young Offenders Institute. <laughs> 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 you get to clean uh, the toilets there But as don't well. forget, Carl, I think God invented Nintendo too. <laughs> right. Well, anyway, so that was all right. I loved it on the Friday. Yeah. I mean, mate said if you go for four weeks, four, like, weeks in a row without missing a day. Yeah. Uh, you get a free badge, you know. And like, salvation. Oh, I don't, I don't, I don't like <laughs> yeah. all this sort of being stuck in stuff. Do you know right. what I mean? That's yeah. what yeah. Yeah, get tied down. yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like, oh, every day. Yeah. Right. So, um, anyway, so, so you've got to come again on Sunday. So I thought, well, we'll have another game of table tennis. It'll be all right. Yeah. So anyway, I go on the Sunday. <laughs> who was oh. this? Who was this servant of God? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I go on the Sunday. It's like a totally different club. There's no table tennis. That's how they trick you. No sabutio. Yeah. They start handing out Bibles. Oh. And it's I like a timeshare like, thing. Hang on a minute, right? <laughs> they trick you. So, so I didn't go again on Sundays. I used to just go on the Friday. Just go on the Friday. Brilliant. And Brilliant. Yeah. I'm amazed no one else saw through that. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, there used to be loads there on the Friday, so they, they, won't, they won't even notice if yeah. that I'm not like. Yeah, do you know sure. what I mean? <laughs> that I'm not showing up on a Sunday. So anyway, uh, carried on. It was Just this kid in the vicar. Oh, I love that. You, you got one over on the church. So yeah. I, I was loving it, right? Playing table tennis and that. Yeah, and no then uh, on a Sunday. <sighs> They found out where I live, and the head fella started coming round, knocking on the door. God, <laughs> <laughs> the, the he's everywhere. It. <laughs> Why did he knock? The fella, for like this. <laughs> the fella who like ran the club, he started coming round, knocking on the door, and I saw him coming up the path, and I said to my mum, "Oh, it's the fella from the Crusaders." Yeah. She didn't even know what I was. No, in. she, she, she was thought like, you were nicking hubcaps and stealing cars. She yeah, didn't yeah. Have a clue what I was it's talking about. You've been going to church. You've been to church. I don't you believe little it. Little bleeder. That's not how we brought you up. <laughs> So, uh, I said, look, just tell him I'm, I'm not in, tell him I'm not in. And she had to keep doing this and they were coming round every Sunday to try and make me, like, go, yeah. go on a Sunday. It was yeah. really important that I went and yeah. that I was abusing the system and all this. Anyway, I didn't go, um, and then- Why didn't they just tell you on the next time we turned up on a Friday? <laughs> yeah. No, well, I, I, because there was so many people there on a Friday, you just get mixed in in the crowd. Yeah. Right. It was jammed. It was well popular on a Friday. Yeah. Yeah. Right? But anyway, on one of the Sundays, um, it was, it was quiet for a bit. And, um, they stopped coming round, so I thought, right, I can go out again, right, on a Sunday, because they used to avoid hanging around the house in case What sort yeah. of reign of terror <laughs> is this? It's incredible. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. so I thought, right. It's like the Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, great, they forgot about me. Yeah. Uh, everything, I can carry on in sort of normal life now. Yeah. And uh, I was playing out in the avenue, fella comes round. Oh. And he goes, there you are, you, oh, you, you know, you're always busy on a Sunday. Uh, you enjoy Fridays and that, don't you? I was like, yeah, yeah. He goes, well, come on, you've got to come with me. And I couldn't get out of it. No. Do you know what I mean? Uh, it's like, what could I say? Charlie says. Right? Yeah. So, um, anyway, he nearly killed me in a car crash. <laughs> so that was the excuse I used next time. He had a Mini, right? And right. he was driving us there and he hit the curb, nearly sort of turned over the Mini. Oh. And it was like three of us in the back. So, I said- <laughs> that record? So. Next time, or was it came, a joke? next time he came round to pick us up, I said, "Look, really enjoyed it and that." I said, "But ever since that journey, I really, you know, I don't, I don't want to get in the car with you again because it scared me a bit." And right. I said, "All right then, I didn't have to go again." That's all right, isn't it? That's extraordinary. Yeah, he almost killed you in a car. It's a parable. Thank, thank God, no one was hurt. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. that Your the, life moves in incredible ways. Yeah, rather like God. Yeah, so. uh so they're, prob go. they're probably round there now, aren't they? Going, is he coming tomorrow? Is he <laughs> <laughs> what we got? Well, 
Are we talking about the prizes next? Well, let's talk about the prizes. We've got the, yeah, we've got the big game rock busters coming your way soon, Rick. I know you're excited about that. And I, is there more educating Ricky this week? Have you got that planned? There is. We are struggling on that feature a bit now because I feel like we, we've covered a lot of topics. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Well, I know about hairy Chinese kids yeah. and deaf people that hit their head and can hear again. Sure. So I don't think there's lots more to learn <laughs> in life. <laughs> and the amazing Carl Pilkington. Right. Prizes. Yes. Them. Rockbusters. Yeah. It's, uh, one of the big exciting quiz shows and this may be one of your last chances to play. There's rumours that it's gonna get ditched, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> rumours there that Carl Wilkinson, the creator and mastermind behind it, has already <laughs> grown tired of it. It's <laughs> off in the way. You heard them earlier on, the very best of the Stone Roses from that. We've sure, played, uh, sure. I Wanna Be Adored. That's one of the prizes. That's a nice little, uh, Christmas compilation. Second hand now then, really, isn't it? Second hand, yeah. yeah. Fifty years of the greatest hit singles. I'll tell you there's some great stuff on here. Oh, Opens, Rick, with, uh, Bohemian Rhapsody. One of the, one of the big, biggest, uh, number ones of all time. If you've not heard that enough already, you're followed then by, uh, John Lennon's Imagine, Candle in the Wind, Elton John, you've got, uh, all, all on sorts one of CD, Stephen. Well, it's, uh, they've chosen some of the greatest rock they've, minds. They've chosen some of the best songs by some of the best artists. Go on. Uh, Paul McCartney's Mull of Kintyre. <laughs> 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 That's on there. Uh, we've got, uh, let me see. Culture that is Club, pretty Club, impressive, though, because they are real big classic number ones, as opposed to, you know, the, 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 the song by the artist they didn't really care about. You see those things on, uh, this? is not available in the shops and it's, you know, the second best song artists have done. It seems odd that we're giving it away on XFM because it includes, uh, Robbie Williams' Angels, yeah. uh, Atomic Kittens' Hole Again, Spice sure. Girls' Wannabe, Connie Minogue's uh, Can't Get You Out of the Head, and I think it closes, well it almost closes with Steps' Tragedy. That's the penultimate track. It ends though, uh, any ideas? Yeah. A big, big hit single. But Did they know it's Christmas Band-Aid? Perfect for your uh, Christmas sure, party. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, we've sure. also got the uh, Groove Armada current album, is that yeah, from there? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And signed by the man himself, the Big Beach Boutique uh, DVD, Fat Boy Slim's uh, concert on that Brighton Beach. And uh, there's all kinds of treats on there. Uh, and includes a, um, an audio commentary <laughs> by, Nor by Norman Cook. I don't know how that works. Three hours of him going, this is where the needle almost jumps. Yeah, Watch exactly. this I did a little bit of scratching. I'm not very good at scratching, That's but just uh, look forward to that. I'm putting a, putting a different track. You'll see me there. Yeah. There's the crowd loving it. Here's me. I'm just waiting. This is where I, I, put, I go from, uh, I go from Conga Squad to Basement Jacks. Yeah. Look forward to that. That's one of mine. I'll pop on what you see there. I've got, I've got Praise You Ready on <laughs> Yeah, I just got, got that. That's that slightly dusty. I just had to wipe that down with a damp rag. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> look forward to that. Plus, uh, I suppose this is good if you're a fan. This is a uh, box set of the first series of Linda Green. I think a new series starts this week or has already started. I'll yeah. tell you what I found when I was clearing up, Rick, because I know there's not a big movie this week. We normally give away a big movie. Oh. I was moving house this week and yeah. I found a video that you're more than welcome to if you're a fan. But it um, no, it stars Kurt Russell. Executive decision. <laughs> <laughs> I've got that to give away if you're interested. Uh, Executive decision with Steven Seagal in a uh, cameo as well. So, uh, <laughs> oh, I think it's I think it's on TV this week, Rick. So if you <laughs> miss it this coming Channel Friday, five? you don't tape it this Friday. Well, here it is on video. Bring Vickers. it in because I think Carl's excited about that. I think Carl would like to win that. There's wouldn't some you? Great prizes well, there. How about if you come up with an extra Rockbusters today? For the, for like the bonus prize. I don't think I'm the man for the job, Carl. I think it has to come from your unique yeah. take on the world. Carl, you don't, I don't think you've quite worked out why you're funny <laughs> and why things you do are good. Go on then. Right, you ready then? So, uh, just in case, uh, you haven't heard it before, I give you some initials of a band or an artist. We're not doing Rockbusters now, are we? Yeah, I thought, well, we've just- Oh, we, we keep that going, then we got- well, I, I love educating Ricky, that's my favourite thing now. Well, what, what do you want to do, Steve? I oh, mean, it's, it's, it's just, just, it's just, clues. It's just like you've, it, it's, it's sort of bigged up the prizes. And, and so this be... is only by email. Give the email address out now for people to write it down now, Carl. Right, it's ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Only entries on email. Yeah. You're gonna get three clues, you've gotta get them all right. And you win all the You stuff. win all those prizes you said. Okay, Carl, go on then. Right, and just a quick example, uh, the th one of the first ones we did, it was like AK and the clue was Exploding Pet. Yeah. And it was Atomic, Atomic Kitten, Kitten, right? Yeah. So you understand how it works now. These right. are your clues. The first one, <laughs> um, that army has got some well nice trenches. <laughs> <laughs> that army has got some well nice trenches. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> and the initials there are <laughs> DW. Do you okay. write some of the questions for 15 to 1? <laughs> <laughs> Go on. So that army has got, got some a similar well, phrasing. Nice trenches. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, the second one. Um, what are the initials there, Carl? On that person. D D W. D W. Yeah. Right. Uh, the second one. The top of them curtains are all wrecked. All the materials all worn. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> he acts it out, though. We've got to get him on telly. We have got to oh, get him on yeah. telly, because his little face and his, so his gestures and- That's the second one. The initials being H-V, okay? The top of those curtains are wrecked. All the material's all worn out. Right, H-V. <laughs> and the final one, um, here's the final clue. Um, I was in Texas the other week, right? I tripped and landed on my knees in a puddle. <laughs> what's the, what's uh, the initials? W-H for that one. So I was in Texas, I tripped up, landed on my knees in a puddle. So that's W-H. Incredible. <laughs> He's got it! Is it right. great? It's fantastic! It's desperate. Okay, time to join the record. Time to join the record. Remember, you're playing for uh, these okay. uh, compilation albums. We've got the Fat Boy Slim DVD, Linda oh. Green on VHS. And of course, uh, <laughs> Executive Decision, starring Kurt Russell as well. <laughs> oh, God! Bob Dylan. Just Like a Woman on XFM 104.9. Couple more names, uh, boxing nicknames for you, Rick. I Go think this is from Josh. Uh, Ricky Blue Eyes, I quite like. Uh, and uh, he's also put Toad Rage. <laughs> which, uh, <laughs> which I quite like. Uh, uh, I'll tell you, our number one fan has emailed again. I'm pleased to uh, announce who? Richard Anderson, Dickie Anderson. He was in touch Anders last week. Anders is back. Anders he is back. loves this show. He's such a fan of the show. And this week he's emailed in what actually is the point of your show? Is it to confuse, irritate, depress, or what? All of those things, Dickie. Thanks for, uh, noticing. Oh, he loves this show. <laughs> he's such a fan. He's such a fan. He's, he's brilliant. Because last week, you remember, Carl, he emailed in to say that he'd rather spend his time counting his feet than listen to this show. Presumably he's done that. Yeah. And he's just to email in. Well, how many feet? Incredible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but he's, he loves this he's show. He's good, yeah. So, uh, thanks, uh, R.A. Thanks for listening. See you later. <laughs> Missy Elliott. Work it on XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Educating Ricky? Yeah. Should I do a bit of that? Well, they're, 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 the clues are coming in f are furious. The yeah. answers, I should yeah. say. Yeah. 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 So go on in. Oh, this is what- Yeah, Rockbusters is well underway, Carl, don't worry, you've done yeah. your work now. Okay. Right, come on. Um, right, educating Ricky. This is my favourite bit now. Uh, You're just going to tease us, aren't you, with three uh, headlines? If and I'm going to choose one, then we got the other two as well. Yeah, that's Go the way on. it works. And at the end of it, you learn some stuff. Like I say, I'm struggling a bit with 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 knowledge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at last, he confesses. <laughs> yeah. Go um, on. So the three headlines for you to pick from. We've got um, first one. Um, we'll have a big fire tomorrow. <laughs> 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 I got a, I got a feeling there's some vegetables involved. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, go on. Maybe. Second one, um, um, he's a bit of a nuisance. Okay. All right. All right. And, uh, <laughs> third one, um, <laughs> I'll bake on in the morning, if you're sick of having me here. Oh, that one. Uh, I'll bake on in the morning, if you're sick of having me right, here. Right, I'm having that one. That's brilliant. Right, well, it's a saying. <laughs> Do you know, um, cold shoulder? Giving someone the cold shoulder? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, if you have someone round at your house and, um, you know, you, you try to get rid of them and they're hanging around and stuff and you're like, oh, I wish, I wish they'd go, I'm tired and that. Well, years ago, um... <laughs> when? Literally years ago. Well, ages ago. Sort of, uh... Olden times. I think it said medieval times. <laughs> Yonks ago then. Yonks ago. Yeah. <laughs> medieval, we, yeah. we, we're going back quite a bit on this Well, one. you know when you d find out these books, well, it just popped down when it was. Just make a note. I don't think it says all the time. It just sort of says, you know, a few years back. Yeah. Oh, no, right. no, it doesn't. Well, Never. Uh, all right, I'll make an effort next week. Okay. Right? So, oh, it's annoying that because my girlfriend said to me, just make a note at the time and he'll stop having a go at you. Yeah. Yeah? And I kind of thought, oh, it, it's all right. Didn't, didn't listen. <laughs> I don't think it matters anyway in this one. We're looking at the saying, right? So yeah. it's giving someone a cold shoulder, shoulder, right? <laughs> and what it is, right, ages ago, uh, there wasn't <laughs> enough houses for people. Right. Because there wasn't much money being made, you know, there weren't big businesses, people weren't earning good money like they are now, so there wasn't as many houses, right? right. So what you, what you ended up getting is like, uh, you know, the rich people having a nice place to live. Oh. And the poor people were like wandering about, you know, looking for places to live and that. And what they ended up doing is, they had like, uh, people would go around to the mate's house and say, look, I haven't got anywhere to live, it's a bit cold, can you let me stay, right? Mm. So they'd go, uh, oh, all right, then you can stay a couple of days. But they ended up staying for, like, weeks. Yeah. Right? So, to sort of get rid of them, what they'd end up doing, they'd be making the dinner, and they'd, uh, be making a lovely dinner, like, a uh, bit of meat, nice warm meat, and, uh, nice veg, 
yeah. gravy and This happened every time, did it? <laughs> it <worked. laughs> this is where the saying came <laughs> this from. This is what happened, Rick. This, this is what is happened. happened every time. It was in that vague book. Right. <laughs> the book of vague sayings <laughs> and stuff. Yeah. Right, so, uh... So yeah, so they'd be making a nice meal, but what they did, they looked after all the family, yeah. and the person who won't go home, mm. they just give them some, like, sort of a cut-off of cold meat. Right. So they'd say, you're giving them the cold shoulder. Uh. Meaning- Right. Okay, <laughs> that's- that's rubbish. Um, okay, uh, absolute- <laughs> Carl, no, why no, no. does that necessarily work? Yeah, yeah. Why- do, why, why do they always, in every situation when you want to get with a lodger, well, still feed him every day, but make the meat lukewarm. <laughs> so we They always to... leave then. Yeah. Oh, this food's lukewarm, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna become homeless and they again, go, wandering the streets. And they are you giving me the cold shoulder? Yes. <laughs> Do you want me to leave? Yes, just say leave and No, I like- I like to do it cryptically. <laughs> that way, in years to come, yeah. someone will have a little saying about it. <laughs> well, yeah, that- that was our bacon in the morning. Uh, yeah. If you've had enough of meat, we'll leave that. Well, we'll-, we'll, we'll... <laughs> Oh my god, in the morning! Oh my god, in the morning, if you've had enough of me! <laughs> so, so uh, come back. What are the others? Just tease us again with the others, we'll come got, back to those. You've got, he's a bit of a nuisance. And, <laughs> uh, and uh, we'll have a big fire tomorrow. <laughs> nice, looking forward okay. to that. Okay. <laughs> Nirvana, yeah. in their version of the man who sold the world to David Bowie Ching. It's yeah. good. Good tune. Good tune. Taken good tune. from that uh, new Nirvana compilation. I like that version, I like the David Bowie version. You can't decide, can you, Rick? You're touring. In fact, I like the Lulu version as well. Is there a Lulu version? Maybe we should play that one, wow. Rick. Yeah. Was this recorded, what, in the 70s? I think she recorded it about the same time right. as David Bowie. I, I, don't, I don't know if he released it as a single. I think it was just on a... Yeah, so, uh, off the album. Interesting. Carl, Carl, Carl is studying. Okay, what's the next yeah. one? What's the ne Educating well, Ricky? I don't know, uh... See, like I say, I was lo looking around and this stuff that is interesting, right? I was looking on the web But there's no point. Well, it's just that I found one about, uh um, What's the point? About a lad who, uh, eight years old, yeah. but he's still breastfed. <laughs> <laughs> now, I don't know if you can get anything out of that. <laughs> is that what his mum said? <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you mean I don't know if I can get anything out of that? You don't need to. No, it's, it's just that, you know- Where did you read that? That was on the internet. Oh. No! Well, yeah. Um, You're always unspecific when you mention it, it's just it was on the internet. Well, yeah. I'm trying to think what I put in. I think I put in Y to see if I'd confuse the computer. <laughs> Go! You are. No, I did, I did, no I, honestly. I did a search, put in why, and I ca he came <laughs> up with funny things that, like, why d is this person doing that? Why is that? And it had a picture of this eight year old lad, sort of, you know, <laughs> on his mum's nipple. And, um, it was saying, you know, <laughs> is, is, is this healthy? <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. You sure that wasn't asking you that question? <laughs> Uh, what, you, what, I put in why? Just to confuse the computer. The computer. <laughs> like the computer going, what do you mean? Yeah. Stop it. Yeah. Oh, look, well, yeah. Uh, Last week, I, I was walking, um, uh, home with him, and I went, uh, I got a, he was saying something stupid, and I went, I've got a competition for next week. Let's do a phone in, and it's called Carl Pilkington, genius or fool. Yeah. Right? And he went, no. No. I went, why not? He went, well, uh, it'd be confusing because they say, there's no difference between genius and being a fool. <laughs> <laughs> we do though, don't we? No, that's, no, that's, no, no that? but it, it's rubbish and people say there's a fine line between madness and genius and, oh. you know, it's a ridiculous soundbite. Uh, they don't say there's a fine line between a genius <laughs> and an idiot. Well, the people who do are idiots. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what, what would you do there though, just to sort of wrap that little thing up, what would you do? That lad loves his mum's his mum's milk. What are you ta- what are you asking me to come up with? <laughs> no, I'm a just- A title for the- the story- No, 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 it's what? just- it's just what would you do? Right? What do you I mean what would I do? Well, it's causing a bit of a problem in the area, right? <laughs> what area? In- in America, I think it was. Oh, America a problem, are they? George Bush is worried about this kid well, who's no, breastfeeding right, at eight. Imagine it like this, right? Right. But mm -hmm. so, Carl, what are you asking me? About this spurious story you saw on the internet? I saw on the internet, there's yeah. an eight year old lad, he likes his mum's milk, yeah. And it's saying, is this right? Should it? No, be it's not. On? But what? What? What, <laughs> what do you want Ricky to do about it? It's not his responsibility. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, but but the little town that he lives in, they're all yeah. causing an uproar, right? <laughs> Going, this isn't right. You know, no. I can't let my kid play out in case he's in the garden with his mum getting a bit hungry, right? Yeah. So, oh, 
God. What should they do? Because his mum's saying, well, he likes it. Yeah. And he, you know, what, so what do you do? I don't know the laws. No, but I'm not asking you to sort out the laws. I'm just saying, if you lived in that neighbourhood, what yeah. would you say? If you went up to him and said, look, everyone's getting a bit fed up with this, look. I'd say, what, 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 what would I do? What do you mean, what would I do? <laughs> what, what are you asking me? <laughs> right, it doesn't matter. No, 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 what are you asking me? What are you asking me and Steve and no, the I'm public? I'm just saying, say if you live next door to this woman. Yeah. Right? The kid's hungry, eight years old. He's out playing on his bike and he goes, Mom, I'm getting a bit peckish. And he goes, All right, son. She whops one out. <laughs> um, and he starts having his having his milk, right? <laughs> you, live, you live next door, you're putting your washing out and you see this going on. <laughs> you're getting a bit sick of it because it's gone on for months. <laughs> Eight so, years, I see. Why is it your business? Just why are you me? why are you such a nosy neighbour that you're concerned? What would you do, Carl? Let's turn it back on him. Yeah. What would you do? What's your solution? What would you do? Well, I thought I'd say, right, why are you doing this? And she'd say, um, because he likes it. And i go, all right then, put it in a bowl first. <laughs> <laughs> Genius. So and you think that would sort that out? No, because uh, I was thinking about the whole thing, right, and you do that when you're a baby and everything's all right, innit? Yeah. yeah. No one bats an eyelid at sure. a little baby having, having a bit of milk from its mum's right. breast, right? Yeah. You'd almost say it was natural. But you grow out of it. <laughs> it's like, you don't see. It got me thinking about things you don't see. And you don't see. <laughs> Did you put this into a computer? Show me things you don't see. What else no. don't you see? Well, you don't see, like, an old man having a Twix. <laughs> <laughs> you never... <laughs> ah! Oh! So what? Um, <laughs> you, know you know the terrible thing about all this, Steve? Is he's right. You don't see an old no, man having no, a Twix. No, no, that's a terrible but, thing. But, so what they have got, right, they've made old man toffees, haven't they? They've come up with burgers. <laughs> Is that a song? Oh, oh, God! You don't see it all. <laughs> no. no. Listen, no. So they've got their worthers, right? Yeah. So <laughs> Look at him! You Forget think he's giving a lecture no, at no, Oxford? It's, it's not coming anywhere. No, go know? on, sorry. Go on. I'm what? just saying. Right. You grow out of things. Yeah. And the old man, I'm sure when he was a kid, he'd have a twit. <laughs> yeah. And now it doesn't look right, so he's having. <laughs> Right. I don't think Werther's Originals were specially designed for old people. I think they were sweets that just happened to have been made for years. Mm. That's why old people eat them. Yeah. They didn't go, hang on, there's a market here. I've <laughs> noticed old people aren't eating Twixes. Quick, let's make some yeah. old man sweets. But the, the, the little yeah. advert, he gives it to his grandson as well, doesn't he? He goes, I have a Werther's Original. No, I so think it, it cuts though before he throws it back in his face and goes, <laughs> get, get me a Twix. <laughs> And a damn curly whirly or Pilkington. So, other things you don't see, Carl? Got any other ones? Or you obviously been thinking about this? Um, what confuses you when you look out your window? What confuses you with the world? What do you walk around going, "Oh, that's a bit weird"? I remember um, when you were in uh, Edinburgh, you were confused because you saw someone putting a parking ticket on some rubbish, <laughs> which confused yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. That, that was weird. Yeah. Um, the world's a crazy place, isn't sure. it? I mean, whatever you look at, you can. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like what? Like what? Well, oh, anything. I mean, you could look out the window there and you'll see something. You go, why are they, why are they doing that? Yeah. What are they doing that for? Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you this, uh, this, maybe we should bring back White Van Carl. There's some interesting questions this week, Rick. Yeah. We could, we could pull that out of the bag if you want to. Shall we do that? Just, uh, get, uh, Carl's take on, uh, the world's Let's do it. Let's well, do it. I'll tell you what, we'll do that in a second. Let's have another Educating Ricky, because well, I think you got sidetracked with your, your, your talk of Well, just the other thing on things you don't see. Look at the way when I went to school, there was two kids with them big heads. Mm. Now. You don't Never see them. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. no one else saw them anyway, Carl. It's only you that saw <laughs> two of them, not related, and wouldn't hang around with each other because you think they thought it would be too <laughs> obvious. Uh, <laughs> webbed, webbed fingers and big heads. That's amazing. And there was a kid with a pigeon chest. So. Oh yeah, and the and the the lady with the head like a bag of spuds. Oh, Let's well, not yeah, go through these again. It just that. raises too many questions that can't be answered. <laughs> Yeah. Right then. <laughs> so, um, we've got, um, we'll have a big fire tomorrow. Yeah, go okay. on. Is that the one you want? Let's yeah. go for it. Right, um, I think this was like round the 1700s. <laughs> <laughs> <He's> bluffing. Um, <laughs> and. He's bluffing. But it's, it's Who was the king then? Mm. Don't know. Go on. But it's, uh, it's about the word bon bonfire, right? Bonfire. Bonfire. Yeah. Do you know where it comes from? No, go on. No. 
Right, what happened is it's got nothing to do with Guy Fawkes and that, which is what I thought when I saw it. It's got nothing to do with that. But ages ago, at 1700s, yeah. right, um, the, um, didn't have enough houses, like I mentioned. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. So, if that happens, you get people living on the streets. Uh -huh. You get sure. diseases, people aren't cleaning properly. Mm. So, you get more deaths. Mm -hmm. All right? Yeah. So, think about it. You've got all these dead bodies lying around. Uh, they're running out of space, because there's, like, I don't know, I don't know why they're running out of space, but <laughs> okay. they haven't, they haven't got much, I don't know why, really. <laughs> I was gonna say, they should've just buried them, but, you know, there's probably more land back then than now. He doesn't need anyone else in the room. Have a conversation with himself? <laughs> yeah, we could leave and we'd come back and you go, I've sorted it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway, for some reason, um, they, they presumably, if, it, if it's going to be they burnt them, it's presumably to do to, to that it also kills the parasite or, or whatever's carrying the parasite on them, as opposed to burying them and not killing the disease. Well, yeah. So that's that. There you go. You've worked it out. They, they piled them up <laughs> and they turned it into a celebration because there was a lot of fed up people at that time. <laughs> Did Is this to be the word bon, meaning good? No, no, no. I'll oh. tell you in a minute. Go on. So yeah. you've got all these people who are like going around. And like, oh, you know, so and so died the other day, and you know, nearly every week someone they knew was dying. Yes. So you can imagine, like, just constant, like, being depressed. Mm. So and they've got all these bodies lying everywhere. It's like, oh God, what are we <laughs> gonna do? So they said, we're all too fed up at the moment. <laughs> said let's let's make this a better world. This was 1701 by the time they got <laughs> yeah, together. Yeah. <laughs> so they said, uh, what we need to do is uh, have a big party. Mm. So mm. they said, yeah, yeah. Good thinking. See what you're thinking. So, um, they go, right, well, we'll put all the bodies yep. in a big pile, mm -hmm. and they're all diseased and that, so yep. they, set f they set fire to the bodies, mm -hmm. yep. and, they, and they said, let's uh, have this as a celebration to remember them mm -hmm. by, and, you know, uh, we'll, we'll have a drink and that, and have a chat, we'll have this big fire going, and it came from bone fire. Ah, right. So bone it was, fire. it was, it was all the bones, bomb fire, it's, it's bone fire. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah? yeah, that's interesting. So that's that's how it came about. Yeah, in the 1700s. Yeah, that was. No, nah, probably. Okay. I, I reckon it was 1600s. Probably I, earlier. I probably reckon earlier. it was the plague. Mm, mm, I mm. reckon it came from. But uh, interesting stuff. Interesting. Yeah, so stuff. That, that's. Yeah. Uh, Did you celebrate Bonfire Night? Is that a big celebration for you? Nah, Do you like the fireworks? I'm sick of fireworks. I just think it's the, they're rubbish. Is yeah, I'm, I, I'm, I'm not impressed. I've never been impressed by fireworks. No. Even as a kid, you know, you have to go to like sort of community kind of get gatherings with a bonfire and fireworks and yeah. some local vicar or whatever would come out and- But I also think the adults tedious. think the kids love it yeah. and they and, and, and if they just got together and said, should we go this year, they'd all go no. Yeah, that's not absolutely. Go, that's not good yeah. this year. It, what would be better is if the vicar had <laughs> wheeled out like a massive rocket, yeah. climbed in, yeah. gone last <laughs> one to the moon is a bender, <laughs> and then fired himself <laughs> off. Now that, I'd pay to see. That's a fire <laughs> display I'd like to see. As <laughs> it is, it's just oh, rubbish. Oh dear. Yeah. Is that's that excellent. Your feeling, Carl? Yeah, I, yeah. I, I'm not keen. No. Sorry, what, what, what clue was that? Um, we'll have a big fire tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Bone marrow. <laughs> Bone <laughs> marrow. <laughs> Genius. Let's <laughs> play the record. Oh, God! <laughs> oh, right, what's this? Go on. What, tell them, go on, just get on with it, because I just can't believe what you just said. What, what, what are we doing? Are we, uh, the final one? Yeah. Right, the last one, like I said. No, no, no. Say, say the record. Yeah. Say the record you played, the, go on. This is, uh, Free Association. Yeah, brilliant, I right. I wish I wouldn't art. Yeah, and what did you just say to me just before this was ending? He just looked, he just looked over at me and went, are there any animals without a brain? No, hang on a minute. No, 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 right, right. And I went, yeah, there's animals that are, he went, oh, I was not talking about this, but it's sad. There's a lad born without a brain, and he laughs a lot, and his hearing and his sight's okay. I'll go, well, that's impossible. You, you if, if he's without a brain, all that is impossible. And he went, well, this was in the <laughs> magazine. <laughs> no, it was in a book that somebody sent. Right. And I didn't want to bring it up, because it is a bit sad, really. That this, you know, young lad, there's a picture of him sat there with his mum, and, uh... What? Uh, Carl! Well, Carl! And, uh, Forget it. it c it's impossible. Well, there it must have been more to the story. He can't, can't not have a brain. Hearing and sight is a concept within the brain. It's that's all it is, right? Yeah. The ears are yeah. just receptacles. They're just yeah. So, and, but that's why it was in this book. It was a book of mysteries. Carl, you know if you if you if you <laughs> Carl, if you're reading a book and you see a photo and you guess <laughs> at what you think the story might be, that doesn't make it true. That no, doesn't make yeah. it fair. I, I looked at it because I thought he looks like an happy lad. Sure. And, and I read about it and I thought that's weird. Like you've said, the fact that he hasn't got a brain but he can see and he can hear. No! 
Impossible. Uh, uh, Impossible. <laughs> okay. Go well, on. I, I, don't, I don't know who to believe. <laughs> Listen, uh, we haven't done it for a while. White Van Man. I thought yeah, there's some interesting back, questions back. raised today, and yeah. I think it might be nice to well, just call them. Uh, I think direction. we set Carl up again in the last hour as a person that people want to know yeah, they wanna his know opinions what on they the world. What, yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. If you're not familiar with it, uh, on Saturdays the Sun newspaper um, asks a typical white van driver questions uh, his opinions on the week's news, mm. and uh, we thought we'd throw these in the direction of Carl. Um, yeah. And then what do you make? Uh, what do you make of? Uh, this teenage thug, Carl, Mickey Carroll, who spent four months in jail and he's won 9.7 million on the uh, lottery. Is that justice? When you think of all the good people that are going hungry? And there's a lad there and he's won Did he buy the ticket before 7. he went in? Uh, no, I think he bought it once he'd come out. So he's, he's done his time. He's done his time. Fair enough then, he's, he's been punished. Yeah. Right? He's bought a ticket. He's had a lot of bad luck. Mm-hmm. Now he's having a bit of good luck. Quite good luck right, next one. Are next you one. concerned that now he's got all that money he could turn into like a sort of mastermind villain? You know, like a James Bond style villain? He's Ooh. got a criminal streak, we know that. Is that a concern for you? Well, I mean, we imagine don't. that he could build we, some kind of underwater fortress. We don't, with, with, with my lawyer's hat on, we don't know that. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> well, he'd have to prove that he didn't have a criminal streak. <laughs> I'd say, have you been in jail for four months? <laughs> yeah. yeah sometimes but, people are bad because they haven't got any money, so he might be just an angel of gold now. Or yeah, yeah. Is. Um, yeah. one in five children aged between 11 and 16 go on booze binge sessions at least once a week. That's terrifying news, isn't it? Kids, they, they know, they know too much now. Yeah. yeah. Um, you despair. To you, yeah. You despair. Yeah. Know, right? <laughs> yeah. Listen to this one, right? Go on. Me, me dad had me, uh, niece in the car, right, running her to school one day. And, uh, she was in the back of the car with a mate. And they were chatting away about stuff like kids do. Um, and he got onto the topic of one of the mates, who he said, uh, I mean, you've got to remember, niece, this point, was probably about f five or six, something mm. like that, right? Mm. In the back of the car, talking about My Little Pony, whatever it is they play with. Uh, subject changed. Um, oh, that Lisa in, uh, in our class, she's a lesbian, isn't she? Right. <laughs> that was the t that's what they were talking about. Yeah. Chatting away about it. <laughs> Just openly talking about yeah. lesbianism. And probably, you know, <laughs> this is the topic that they're talking about in the pub, when they're having one. <laughs> Out drinking. Yeah. Yeah, but they might have thought a lesbian was a, 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 you know, a, a funny word or something. You don't, you don't necessarily know the, the ins and outs of it, do they? He's, he's weird though, isn't it? Because when I was, when I was younger at school, you didn't like, I mean, you swore a little bit, but it wasn't like major swear words. And you sort of did a little bit of nicking, but nothing like they get up to now. I mean, if... My, my, um, girlfriend, when she was about seven or eight, she was walking to school with her mum, and she called her a C-U-N. You are Joe. No, she said, oh, you are, because she thought it was a big, f she said she thought it was a big furry animal. She thought, so she was being nice, <laughs> and I remember, like, where'd you do that? Where'd you do that? Like, just heard it at school. So they might, you know, they might not know what it means. Well, I tell you, you know, um, I have to, I'm gonna have to use kind of euphemisms here to tell right. this story, but when I was at school, I learned, you know the stronger version, it's not the same word, but it's very similar with one letter change. I'm gonna use twit. Yeah. You know the word I'm thinking of. Yeah. But I, I'm gonna use the word twit to replace it, right? And I said, I went round- Do you think that's what? Yeah. Alright. That's, right. that's what I'm thinking of. And, um, so can I say it? Am I allowed to say it? No, no it's, 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 not, it's weird it. though, because- no, hang on, Some people look from Cornwall use that, like, saying twit. So, if people well, are listening to Cornwall- well, I think, a twit I think is a pregnant goldfish. Well. Well, uh, I, I learned the, uh, I learned the stronger version of twit. Yeah. Um, twat. <laughs> <laughs> For those that aren't sure. <laughs> I, I learned this at school when I was like <laughs> 10 or whatever, and I didn't know what it meant. I thought it was just a stronger version of twit. Yeah. I thought it was just if you were really annoyed with someone because they were yeah. a real twit. Because uh, I is worse than I. <laughs> exactly, yeah. apparently. So, you know, Carl <laughs> would be a that. twit. And, yeah. um, and so I started using this at home because I didn't realise what it meant. I started using this at home, oh, you twit, you're a twit, and saying it to my dad, you're a twit, you're, you know, but yeah. not saying twit. Yeah. And my dad didn't know what it meant either. Great. Well, I can believe. So he started using it as well, right? So uh, then we'd be driving in the car, he'd be saying to my mum, you stupid do it. Yeah. And he'd say to my mum, you, 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 you don't pull over and pull over, you're gonna bum at you. And saying this, that I learned at school from Mark Johnson what it really meant. Yeah. Stopped using it, obviously finding out it was quite an offensive word. Yeah. Couldn't, I didn't want to bring it up to my dad. I didn't want to sit my dad down and say, dad, do you know that word we've been saying? Yeah. You know what it means? So now, to this day, I've never brought it out with him. So we'll be driving, you know, 
I'll be- I'll go in for Christmas, we'll be driving around. He'll be calling my mum that word. <laughs> <laughs> Left, right and centre. I think she knows. I think she's just embarrassed. Or she's just upset and she knows what it means. She goes, why does he keep calling me this terrible <laughs> word? But he's the only one, I think, in our family who doesn't know what it means. No one's oh. got the guts to say- I don't know whether I should tell him this oh, Christmas. Oh, what a twat. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Good to hear that again. Always good to hear that. Suede. Animal nitrate. Carl was all flustered because there isn't a, a, a record set up and he's getting all tizzy. He's been more worried about his competitions than sorting out putting records on ready. Uh, what? I'm, I'm after so Steve's song for a love. Well, I'll tell you what, you, uh, why don't you carry on with your, uh, educating Ricky section? I'll have a look on the, uh, on the We'll keep it going, Steve. Yeah, Cover you keep it. Go on. Clear. Go on then, right, okay. We've right. had, uh, we've had a, a few emails. Uh, anyone got it right, Carl? Anyone um, got it right? Educating Ricky, that's the final one. We've got to get that out of the way. We've got to get Rockbusters as well, though. Go on then. We've only got five minutes left. Come on, just do Educating Ricky. Right. God. The, uh, the last one that we haven't done right. is, um, he's a bit of a nuisance. Go on then. Um, again, not, not really, not really that interesting. Thanks. Um, no, like, again, I t spoke to you in the week and I had much better things, like when I tell you about Brian Blessed climbing Everest and for some reason it made him, uh, it played havoc with his belly and what? He, f he followed through and he had to clean up. Shut using, himself. Yeah, using, um, using ice and stuff. Why are you tell- why are you telling me that Brian Blessed- what, what- in what way is telling me that Brian Blessed shit himself once in any way educational? Because I was saying how he- he- he was climbing Everest, right? Right. I give it to him, he's an actor and that, but he- he gave that a go. Yeah. Right, he played- What's the know, point of that, you'd say, wouldn't you? You'd say, God, he's- he's, you know, Oh, good. so he's all right. Uh, me- me doing a boxing match for no reason is rubbish, but him climbing Everest and shitting himself- Yeah, he did that. Is, is commendable. Right, and he's only gonna, like, go and do it again. He's gonna climb it again. Yeah, but he might not shit himself this time. Yeah, but what's the point in going? Nothing's changed up there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good point. Yeah, good. Been? Well, it has. They've probably, uh, they've well, probably well, cleared well. it up by now. Right, but, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's slip on it. I can't really bother just telling you this one, cause- Come on! To be just honest, do it- or do it now! Steve, how are we doing? Look, no, no, never mind that. Look, just tell me what that means. Uh, oh, he's a nuisance. Oh, this is so annoying, Carl. I'm gonna go mental. Right, Talk. Right, right, listen, I'm just putting right. this in here, right? Right, nuisance is a bit of a nuisance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Apparently, yeah. the old fella who used to hang people. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He used to be able to tell somebody's weight just by looking at them. Right? Um, that's a bit of a bonus fact. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be the judge of that. The, 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 thing, that, the thing that I wanted to tell you yeah. is, um, money for old rope, do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, can't even, I can't even be bothered. Yes, you're gonna tell me now. Come on, Carl. Right, I mean it. Basically, money for old rope yeah. came from the, t right. What was all that about? He can tell someone's weight. <laughs> that was a that bonus for? fact. And blind blessed shitting himself. What are you, what? No, don't you fucking, oh. no, tell me. That now, you nearly made me swear then. Just, I'm getting really annoyed. <laughs> I'm getting really annoyed now. Down with this back, Carl, or I'm gonna go mental. <laughs> Come on, Carl, time's running out. Not that people, years ago, when people used to be hung, right? Right. If you didn't like the person who's been hung, You'd go, God, I really don't like him. And to, and so you never forget the <laughs> time. Because even if they're being hung, we take that as red. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, so they never forget afterwards to get the hangman to get the rope and to cut it up into little pieces and he'd sell them. He'd sell the little pieces of rope to people. And See, that, so the, Carl, that's the most interesting thing, if it's true, that you've come up with. Right. Okay. And so what's, what's, you, so they, they sell the rope? They sell the rope and it's money for old rope. Money for old rope. Meaning, like, you know, God, it's easy to make money, that, that all they have to do is cut it up and sell it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm cynical. <laughs> I'm not so convinced right, listen, though. We're, we're really tight, we haven't even got time for a last track, we've got an ad break and we've got to give out- Okay, answers. give the answers then, this is right. ridiculous. So, Come Steve, on. do you want to pick a winner? Uh, I've got oh. a winner when you give us the answers. Okay, so the first clue was, uh, that army has got some well nice trenches. Yeah. That was DW. Who's that? Dandy Warhols. <laughs> That's brilliant! <laughs> That's good, yeah. Uh, the second okay. one. The top of them curtains are wrecked, all yeah. the material is worn. Yeah. HV, that's yeah. uh, Holly Valance. Oh, he got a phone call for a woman saying that I haven't heard it, and she went, she was, he was talking to her off air, and she went, uh, what is it? Uh, so and so, so them curtains went, alright. Oh, said, you know the thing around the top of the um, curtain is a palmet, not a valance, and he went, cut her off. Yeah, but. <laughs> 
my aunt is always making balances on everything. I'll tell you about that next week. Right? <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. Right. Is this the one that farted for five minutes? Yeah, yeah, the very same. <laughs> yeah. Right? So, we'll talk about that. Uh, I was in Texas, I tripped up, I landed on my knees in a puddle, WH. Yeah. Uh, wet knee Houston. Right? Wet knee Houston. Yeah. So, You're a maniac. So, who's a winner? We've got Pete, Catherine and Laura in Newcastle upon Tyne. They're listening uh, online, I assume. And, uh, oh, they're going to get those great places. And remember, they've got loads of stuff. They've got, uh, the DVD here. They've got Linda Green. They've got Stone Roses. They've got another compilation. And Executive Decision. What did you read about Brian Blessed? Is it actually true or have you a live or no, something? It was, an, it was an interview with him in it. And what did he say? Oh, Come on, time. what did he say? He said I, I climbed Everest and the, I played off it with me belly. Uh, let's talk about it next week. We've <laughs> really run out now. Oh, you're a fool.